Reset began with the police receiving a call from a mysterious woman. That mysterious woman told them that a bus would explode when that bus arrived at the bridge. But not long after that, before the bus reached the bridge, it exploded at the crossroads. One of the bus passengers was a woman named Lee C. King. While C. King was sleeping, she suddenly woke up and looked nervous. The man who was sitting next to her was worried when he saw her. That man was named Xiao Hiyun. Hiyun reached his bag to take a tissue when he accidentally hit C. King. He apologized to C. King and gave the tissue to her. But C. King was still mad at him because she thought that Hiyun was sexually harassing her. She got up from her chair and told the driver about what Hiyun did to her. Other passengers were surprised when they heard that. They blamed and condemned Hiyun for what he did to C. King, but Hiyun defended himself and said that it was only a misunderstanding. C. King asked the driver to stop the bus. One of the bus passengers was a social media influencer. That social media influencer live-streamed the situation in that bus. Other passengers told the driver not to stop the bus because they needed to arrive at their destination soon. A social media influencer told C. King that he would help her to report to the police when they stop at the next bus stop. The bus driver told C. King that she couldn't get off the bus right now. But after C. King urged him to stop the bus, the bus driver finally stopped the bus and allowed C. King to get off. She asked a passenger to go with her to the police station, but nobody wanted to go with her. She then forced Hyun to go with her. After the bus left, C. King finally managed to calm herself down. Hyun said that he was ready to go to the police station and prove that he was innocent. But C. King suddenly refused to go to the police station and said that she knew that Hyun was not a perverted person. Hyun was confused when he heard that. C. King told him that she couldn't tell him about what happened. She apologized to him and left that place. Hyun was mad at her because of that. C. King looked at Hyun and saw him stopping a taxi. While C. King was walking away from that place, she suddenly heard the sound of an explosion. Suddenly, a motorcycle crashed into her. C. King fell to the ground as she slowly lost her consciousness. People quickly called the ambulance and rushed her to the hospital. In another place, the firefighters arrived and extinguished the fire in the bus after it exploded. At the hospital, C. King finally woke up from her faint. The doctor went to her room and told her that she had a concussion. But C. King believed that she didn't only have a concussion. She thought that something was wrong with her, but she couldn't explain it. Not long after that, the hospital received another patient. That patient was the victim of the bus explosion. Turned out, Eun was also the victim of the bus explosion. The taxi that he used was riding past the bus when it exploded. C. King was nervous when the victims of the bus explosion began to flood the hospital. The police arrived at the crime scene and investigated it. They found out that the bus exploded because it crashed into an oil tanker. They also found out that there were supposed 10 passengers in the bus, but they found only 8 passengers. They wondered about where the rest of the passengers might be. So they checked the security camera and found out that two passengers, C. King and Hyun, got off the bus before it reached the bus stop. They felt suspicious of them because of that. They then decided to investigate C. King and Hyun. A police officer named Jiang Feng went to the hospital and told the doctor that he wanted to talk to C. King. The doctor told him that C. King had a concussion, so she suggested him not to talk to her about difficult topics. Jiang Feng understood and went to C. King's room. He interrogated her about what she remembered before the bus exploded. C. King told him that she was a college student and she got on the bus because she wanted to go to the bookstore downtown to buy some books. Jiang Feng asked her why she got off the bus when the bus hadn't stopped at the bus stop yet. But C. King said that she had never gotten off the bus. Jiang Feng thought that C. King was confused because she had concussion, so he helped her to remember about what happened. C. King finally remembered that she fell asleep on the bus, but she admitted that she didn't remember about what happened after that. Suddenly, Jiang Feng received a call from his coworker. His coworker told her that C. King had no criminal record. Even though C. King was suspicious, the police believed that she was innocent. But Jiang Feng insisted on investigating C. King because he thought that C. King knew something about the accident. It was because in the footage of the security camera, he saw the bus speeding into a motorcycle at the crossroads after C. King got off the bus. In her room, C. King began to remember something about her time on the bus. She said that she had a problem with her heart, so she asked the bus driver to stop the bus and got off. But the police found out that C. King was never diagnosed with heart disease, so they doubted what she said. Jiang Feng returned to C. King's room and asked her if he remembered someone from the bus. C. King said that she remembered that there was a man who wanted to help her get off the bus and call the ambulance. She admitted that she was confused about everything. But suddenly, she finally remembered about what happened. She said that a passenger sexually harassed her on the bus and she got off the bus because she wanted to go to the police station to report him. Jiang Feng was mad at her because she kept changing her statements. Not long after that, Deputy Captain of Criminal Investigation of Jilin City Public Security Bureau, Zhang Cheng, came to that place. He introduced himself to C. King and said that he would interrogate her. 
Jiang Feng told Si King to continue telling her story, but Si King said that she didn't remember about what happened anymore. Jiang Feng threatened that there would be serious consequences for Si King if she lied. But Si King desperately told him that she didn't lie and she had a headache. Jiang Feng forced Si King to tell them about the truth, but Zhang Cheng told him to calm down. Then Zhang Cheng showed Si King the CCTV footage of her and He Yun getting off the bus. Surprisingly, Si King told them that she had committed a murder. She seemed in pain and wanted to vomit. Zhang Cheng offered her a bottle of water. Si King said that she remembered everything, but she didn't know how to explain it. Zhang Cheng then told his subordinates to leave that room. After Jiang Feng and his co-worker left the room, in empathetic tone, Zhang Cheng asked Si King to trust the police and tell them about the truth. Si King finally told him that she thought that she was living in a dream and was stuck in that dream. Zhang Cheng was confused when he heard that and decided to record their conversation. Si King said that she remembered that that afternoon she ran into her professor and told her that she was going to buy some books. After that, she got on the bus number 45 that stopped at her campus and headed to the bookstore downtown. She admitted that she often used that bus that she knew the bus driver well. She said that there were many passengers on that bus that day. So she sat on an empty chair next to a man named He Yoon. After that, she fell asleep and woke up from her sleep not long after that. She thought that she heard her phone ringing, but when she opened her eyes, the bus suddenly exploded. She remembered that she felt like she had died, but she suddenly found herself on the bus, waking up from her sleep again. At first, she thought that she was only dreaming. She remembered that she had a headache, but she didn't have any wound. She checked the rest of her body and found out that she was in a good condition. Sti Kinning looked around and found out that there were only a few bus passengers left. Because of that, she realized that she had slept on that bus for a long time. She saw the man sitting next to her still sleeping. Suddenly, she heard the same ringtone that she heard in her dream before. She began to feel suspicious because of that. She wondered why she heard the same ringtone if what she experienced before was only a dream. She remembered that the bus exploded again not long after that. But this time, that explosion felt more realistic and vivid. She believed that she had died in a bus explosion. Suddenly, Zhang Cheng received information about He Yun, the man who sat next to Si King on the bus. In that message, it was revealed that He Yun was being hospitalized at that hospital. After that, Si King continued telling her story. She said that after the bus exploded for the second time, she woke up on that bus for the third time. She began to suspect that there was something wrong with everything. Zhang Feng thought that Si King was lying and told her to stop doing that. But Zhang Cheng told him to go to He Yun's room and check on He Yun. After Zhang Feng left that room, Si King asked Zhang Cheng if he believed in what she said. Zhang Cheng shook his head, but he asked her to continue to tell her story. Si King admitted that when she woke up for the third time, she realized that she was not having a dream. She found it weird that she kept experiencing the same bus explosion over and over again. Because of that, she finally decided to get off the bus. She tried to stop the bus for so many times, but other passengers stopped her from doing that. Then, when she woke up for the fourth time, she tried to break down the window by breaking it down with a hammer. But before she had the chance to do that, the alarm went off and that bus suddenly exploded. When she woke up for the fifth time, she finally gave up and began to think another way to get off the bus. While she was thinking about a way to get off the bus, Yoon accidentally hit her and apologized to her. Then, Si King got up from her chair and told the bus driver that she had a heart attack. She asked him to take her to the hospital, but other passengers told the bus driver not to do that because they almost reached the bus stop. Si King couldn't do anything because of that. He was worried about Si King. He asked the bus driver to stop the bus so that Si King could get off. Suddenly, a passenger said that she had some medicines with her and offered some to Si King. Because of that, Si King failed to get off the bus. After that, she saw the bus exploding at the crossroads after it avoided a motorcyclist and crashed into an oil tanker. Zhang Cheng was surprised when he heard that. He wondered how Si King knew that the bus exploded after it avoided a motorcyclist and crashed into an oil tanker at the crossroads. After that, Zhang Cheng left that room and asked a police officer named Yu Lei who interrogated Si King if he had told Si King that the bus was avoiding the motorcyclist. But Yu Lei said that he didn't mention anything about the motorcyclist. Zhang Cheng then asked him to find out if Si King had never seen or heard that the bus was avoiding the motorcyclist before she was brought to the hospital. After that, Zhang Cheng returned to Si King's room. Si King said that she herself couldn't believe in what she said because it didn't make sense. But she tried to convince him that she wasn't lying and everything that she had told him was true. Zhang Cheng then asked her to continue her story. Si King told him that when she woke up on the bus for the sixth time, she suddenly felt nervous. At the same time, Yoon also woke up from his sleep. Si King was tired with what she was going through. She had no idea about what she needed to do anymore. He Yoon was worried when he saw her. So he reached his bag to grab a tissue, but he accidentally hit her. 
Si King suddenly screamed and told everyone on that bus that Hee-yoon was a perverted person. She said that she knew that Hee-yoon was not a perverted person and he didn't touch her on purpose, but she needed to do that because she had to find a reason to get off the bus. Zhang Cheng thought that Si King was lying because the bus driver would have called the police if he received a report about sexual harassment on the bus. Si King tried to convince him that she was telling him about the truth and continued her story. She said that after she got off the bus, she left that place right away. She admitted that she took Hee Yoon with her because she wanted to save him. So she was sad when she found out that Hee Yoon still became a victim of that bus explosion. Si King finally finished telling her story. She believed that she was stuck in a never-ending time loop because she repeatedly found herself dying in an explosion while riding the same bus. But John Cheng thought that Si King had a schizophrenia. Si King asked him to investigate her if he didn't believe her. Suddenly, John Cheng received a call from Jiang Feng. Jiang Feng informed him that Hee Yoon was in critical condition. John Cheng then left that room and asked Si King to take a rest. Si King felt tired with everything and tried to sleep. In his room, the doctor was trying his best to save Hee Yoon who was in critical condition because he suffered from burns all over his body. But unfortunately, Hee Yoon finally died. But suddenly, Hee Yoon woke up from his sleep and found himself sitting on the bus. Hee Yoon thought that he was only having a dream and saw Si King who was sitting next to her. He was worried about her because she looked nervous and confused. Not long after that, Si King screamed and told everyone on the bus that Hee Yoon was a perverted person. She also forced him to go with her to the police station. But after they got off the bus, Si King suddenly changed her mind and refused to go to the police station. She told Hee Yoon that she knew that he was not a perverted person. Hee Yoon was confused and mad when he heard that. He then stopped a taxi and headed to the office where he would meet his friend. In the taxi, Hee Yoon kept thinking about Si King's strange behavior. He then texted his friend and told him that he would arrive there soon. But when he stopped at the crossroads, the bus suddenly exploded in front of him. The explosion damaged other vehicles nearby, including the taxi that was used by Hee Yoon. Not long after that, the police and the ambulance came to that place and Hee Yoon was rushed to the hospital. The doctor tried to save Hee Yoon, but Hee Yoon finally died. But after that, Hee Yoon woke up from his sleep again and found himself sitting on the same bus. Hee Yoon panicked and felt confused because his dream looked very realistic and vivid. Not long after that, Si King also woke up from her sleep. Hee Yoon saw her and believed that it was not the first time for him to meet her. Si King realized that just like her, Hee Yoon was also stuck in the never-ending time loop. Si King tried to make Hee Yoon remember about what happened to them, but it seemed that Hee Yoon didn't understand about what she was talking about. Hee Yoon finally decided to move to another seat because Si King began to scare him. Suddenly, Hee Yoon remembered about everything that happened. Si King told him that everything that happened before was not a dream. Hee Yoon ignored her and asked the bus driver to stop the bus. Other passengers told him that he was missing the bus stop. The bus driver said that he couldn't stop the bus right now and Hee Yoon needed to get off the next bus stop. Si King approached Hee Yoon and told him that she had tried many ways to get off the bus but none of them worked. Hee Yoon told her that he didn't want her to talk to him. He then forced the bus driver to stop the bus and open the bus door. Other passengers decided to step in and stop himself from opening the bus door. He even told them that the bus would explode soon but nobody believed him. At the crossroads, a motorcyclist suddenly rode past the bus and the bus finally exploded, just like what Hee Yoon said. But suddenly, Hee Yoon woke up from his sleep and found himself sitting on the same bus again. Si King still tried to convince him that what happened to them before was not a dream. But Hee Yoon ignored her again and tried to find a way to get off the bus. Since he looked suspicious, another passenger livestreamed the situation on the bus. Other passengers felt uncomfortable because of that. Hee Yoon then took the hammer and caused the alarm to go off. He broke down the window with that hammer, but other passengers managed to stop him from getting off the bus. Other bus passengers felt uncomfortable because of that incident. They asked the bus driver to stop the bus, but the bus driver said that he couldn't do that. A passenger finally took care of Hee Yoon. Hee Yoon asked them why they couldn't get off the bus. Si King told him that she had tried to run away from that place for so many times, but she failed to do that. Other passengers didn't understand about what Hee Yoon and Si King were talking about. Si King said that there was nothing that they could do except waiting for their death. She asked Hee Yoon not to behave recklessly again when he woke up from his next sleep. Suddenly, the bus avoided the motorcyclist and crashed into an oil tanker nearby. The bus finally exploded and all the passengers died in that explosion. Hee Yoon woke up from his sleep and found himself sitting on the bus again. This time, he looked calmer than before. Even though he felt pain in his body, he still thought that what happened to them before was only a dream. He didn't understand why he was stuck in the never-ending time loop. It felt like he had been hypnotized by someone. Si King admitted that she also didn't know why they were stuck in the never-ending time loop since the first place. But Hee Yoon realized that he was stuck in the never-ending time loop too after Si King forced him to get off the bus with her. 
Before Yun was stuck there, it was only Si King who realized that she was stuck in the never-ending time loop. She said that she had tried many ways to run away from that place, but she failed to do that. She told Yun that it was useless for them to get off the bus because they would end up waking up on that bus again anyway. But suddenly, Si King had an idea. She noticed that the bus always exploded at the crossroads. So she planned to get the bus driver to avoid the crossroads and see if the bus still exploded or not. Then Si King got up from her chair and told the bus driver that she had a heart attack. He even asked the bus driver to stop the bus because he needed to take Si King to the hospital soon. But the bus driver said that they could only stop at the bus stop. The bus began to slow down and the passenger told Si King that she had some medicines with her. Si King had just remembered that she had encountered this kind of situation before. That passenger gave some medicines to Si King and Si King pretended to take them. He Yoon and Si King now had no idea about what they should do because their plan had failed. But He Yoon believed that he could still stop the bus from crashing into the oil tanker and exploding. In the oil tanker, the driver got into an argument with his co-worker. Not long after that, Yi Yoon saw the motorcyclist riding his motorcycle and trying to cross the street. Si King and Yi Yoon warned the bus driver to be careful, and they finally managed to stop the bus from crashing into the oil tanker. Other passengers were surprised when they saw that. They felt suspicious of Si King and Yi Yoon because it seemed that they could predict about what was going to happen. The bus then continued the journey. Si King and Yi Yoon thought that they had saved everyone from the bus explosion. It finally felt relieved and could relax. But when the bus reached the bridge, the alarm suddenly went off and the bus finally exploded. Not long after that, Si King and Hee Yoon woke up from their sleep and found themselves sitting on the same bus. They were surprised when they found that. Si King concluded that the bus exploded not because it crashed into the oil tanker. Suddenly, she remembered that she had heard the ringtone that she heard in the previous accident before. She remembered that she heard it when she woke up on that bus for the first and second time. When she woke up for the third time, she realized that she was stuck in the never-ending time loop. She then began to try to get off the bus, and the bus always exploded after it crashed into another vehicle. She noticed that she didn't hear the ringtone anymore after that. She realized that there was a bomb on that bus, but she didn't know where the bomb was. She told Yoon that they needed to get off the bus, but she didn't know how to because she only managed to do it once. She finally used her old strategy again when she told everyone on that bus that Yoon had sexually harassed her. Her strategy finally worked. He Yoon and Si King managed to get off the bus. After the bus left, Si King called the police and informed them that there was a bomb on the bus number 45 that was heading to the bridge. After Si King finished informing the police about it, He Yoon told her to hang up the call and turn off her phone immediately. The police were surprised when they received that information. They sent a team to find the bus number 45 right away. He Yoon and Si King went to the bridge and waited there. They wanted to know if the police managed to stop the bus from exploding or not. At the police station, the police tried to call Si King back, but they were unable to call her. Because of that, they thought that it was only a prank call. A police officer thought that the woman who made the call, Si King, was forced by a man to make a call before she heard a voice of a man when she talked to them. Si King told Yi Yoon that when she was being interrogated by the police at the hospital back then, a police officer told her that the bus exploded at 1.42. Not long after that, Yi Yoon saw an explosion. The police panicked when they found out about that explosion. They sent a team to check the situation in that place. The firefighters also arrived in that place to extinguish the fire. They found out that all bus passengers died in that explosion. They also found out that the bus exploded after it crashed into an oil tanker. The police then investigated the call that Si King made before. They still couldn't find out if there was a bomb on that bus or not. A police officer then decided to check the security camera. Zhang Cheng called his co-worker and asked him if he found any bomb on the bus. Meanwhile, Si King and He Yoon were walking together at the park. Si King told He Yoon about the time when she realized that she was stuck in the never-ending time loop. She also told him that a motorcycle once crashed into her and she was being hospitalized because of that. She also said that the police visited her at the hospital and interrogated her. He Yoon asked her why the police interrogated her. Si King said that it was because the police saw the CCTV of them getting off the bus. He Yoon was surprised when he heard that. He assumed that the police would interrogate them again now because they got off the bus together, especially to consider that they had called the police and informed them about the bomb on the bus. While waiting for the police to come and interrogate them, Hee Yoon asked Si King to go to another place to talk about something. At the police station, the police checked the security cameras in the city and finally saw a CCTV footage of Si King and Hee Yoon calling the police and warning them about the bomb. They were confused when they saw that footage. They wondered why Si King and Hee Yoon didn't get off the bus stop and went to the bridge after that. It seemed that they were waiting for the bus to explode or waiting for the police to arrive and stop the bus from exploding.
Suddenly, a police officer came to that room and gave them information about Si King and Yi Yoon's identity. The police checked it and found out that Si King and Yi Yoon had no criminal record. In another place, Yi Yoon and Si King had a conversation. Si King said that she wanted to save as many people as she could, but she could only save Yi Yoon so far. Yi Yoon was worried about what happened next. He thought that the police would accuse Si King of making a prank call if they didn't find the bomb on the bus. He suggested Si King to tell the police about the never-ending time loop if the police decided to arrest her. Si King knew that the police wouldn't believe her, but she didn't have anything better to tell them. Yi Yoon said that it was the only thing that they could tell to the police. He thought that the police would only suspect them of having schizophrenia if they didn't believe in what they said. He knew that the police could arrest them, but they would need some evidence to do that. But Si King said that the police would suspect them if they told different stories to them. At the police station, the police finally found out about where Si King and Yi Yoon were right now. Zhang Chang and his team then rushed to their location. Si King and Yi Yoon were still discussing about what was happening to them. So far, Si King had repeatedly died in the bus explosion for 10 times, meanwhile, Yi Yoon had repeatedly died in the bus explosion for 5 times. They also noticed that the bus always exploded at 142 at the crossroads after it crashed into an oil tanker. They also realized that they would always wake up one minute earlier after they died in the bus explosion. Si King said that she didn't remember about what time she woke up on that bus for the first time. But she said that the bus exploded at the bridge, but she was not sure about it. All she remembered was that when she woke up on the bus for the second time, she heard a ringtone on the bus. Yi Yoon was mad when he heard that. He thought that Si King was hiding something from him. He even threw the paper in which he wrote down his analysis about what was happening to them, because he thought that they were going nowhere. Si King desperately told him that she had told him everything that she knew. She just wanted to get out of the never-ending time loop soon. Hi Yoon and Si King then introduced themselves to each other. Si King admitted that the police were very cooperative when they interrogated her at the hospital back then. But they refused to believe her and though that she had schizophrenia. So she was worried if the police wouldn't let them go if they told everything to the police. But Hee Yoon insisted on going to the police station and telling everything that they knew to the police. He argued that the police would believe them if they found the bomb on the bus. Not long after that, John Chang and his team arrived in that place. They approached Si King and Hee Yoon and took them to the police station. They wanted to interrogate them about the call that Si King made. Si King and Hee Yoon agreed to go with them. They headed to the police station by using two different cars. Yi Yoon and Zhang Cheng went inside the same car. In the car, Zhang Cheng asked Yi Yoon why he didn't go to work that day. Yi Yoon said that he was supposed to attend a meeting that day, but it was too late for him to do that now, so he had forgotten about it. Zhang Cheng noticed that Yi Yoon turned off his phone. He asked him why he did that, as if he didn't want people to contact him. Yi Yoon got nervous when he heard his question and turned on his phone right away. Suddenly, he received a call from his friend. Zhang Cheng told him to answer that call and turn on the speaker. He even finally did what he said. In that call, his friend berated him for not attending the meeting where they were supposed to meet with an investor. Apparently, He Yoon was working as a game designer. He Yoon's friend said that because He Yoon didn't attend that meeting, he had to beg so that the investor would agree to fund their project. He Yoon told him that something was happening and hanged up the call right away. Zhang Cheng noticed that He Yoon looked nervous. He then asked him about Si King. He Yoon said that he and Si King met each other on the bus. Si King and Yi Yoon finally arrived at the police station. The police officers told them to put down their phones and other electronic devices and took them to the interrogation rooms. Zhang Cheng and Zhang Feng went to another room and asked his co-worker if she had found any clue of the crime scene. His co-worker said that they hadn't found anything because the dashboard camera got damaged. She said that all they could do right now to find information about the incident was interrogating Si King and Yi Yoon. She also reminded him that Si King and Yi Yoon didn't have criminal record. But Zhang Cheng still suspected them, especially after Yi Yoon admitted that he and Si King had just met each other on the bus. He thought that they looked so close to each other as if they had known each other for a long time. Suddenly, a police officer came to that room and reported to Zhang Cheng about the paper that Yi Yoon threw into the trash can. Zhang Cheng and his co-workers checked that paper right away. After that, Zhang Cheng went to the interrogation room and began to interrogate Si King. In that interrogation, Si King said that she was the one who initiated the idea to call the police and inform them about the bomb on the bus. Zhang Cheng asked her how she knew that there was a bomb on the bus. Si King said that it was not because she found something suspicious, heard weird conversation, or smelled something strange on the bus. Zhang Cheng was getting more confused when he heard that. Si King said that she couldn't explain it to him. Zhang Cheng then got up from his chair and approached Si King. He showed Si King the paper that he Yoon threw into the trash can and asked her about it. In different interrogation room, Jiang Feng was interrogating He Yoon. 
Jiang Feng asked Yi Yoon why he turned off the phone after he called the police and informed them about the bomb on the bus. Yi Yoon said that he did that because he needed to find the evidence and he didn't want the police to bother him with questions. Jiang Feng was confused when he heard that. Yi Yoon finally told him about what was happening to him and Si King. Jiang Feng then showed Yi Yoon the paper that he threw into the trash can. In that paper, Yi Yoon wrote down all important details about the bus explosion. Because of that, Jiang Feng suspected that Yi Yoon had something to do with the bus explosion. But Yi Yoon swore that he was innocent. He admitted that he was not insane and he could think clearly right now. He desperately asked Jiang Feng to believe in what he was about to say. But Jiang Feng said that it was up to the police to believe in what he said or not. Yi Yoon finally told him that he was stuck in a never-ending time loop and he had repeatedly found himself dying in an explosion while riding the same bus. He said that he had repeatedly died in the bus explosion and always woke up riding the same bus afterward. Jiang Feng was mad when he heard that. He thought that Yi Yoon was talking nonsense. He asked Yi Yoon to be serious and tell him about the truth because this incident concerned the lives of many people. After that, Jiang Feng went to see his superior and asked her to allow him to perform a drug test on Yi Yoon. Jiang Feng thought that Yi Yoon was under influence of drug because he said that he was stuck in a never-ending time loop. In the interrogation room, Zhang Cheng asked Si King if someone had ordered her to call the police and inform them about the bomb on the bus. But Si King didn't answer his question. Instead, she asked Zhang Cheng if the police took her call seriously. Zhang Cheng said that he sent a team to the location where Si King told them immediately after the police received that call. But suddenly, Zhang Cheng realized about something. He was surprised when he realized that Si King knew his own name. He wondered how Si King knew his name because he had never introduced himself to her. In different interrogation room, Yi Yoon seemed very nervous. Jiang Feng returned to that room and asked Yi Yoon to tell them about the truth. Yi Yoon tried to convince him that he had told him about the truth, but Jiang Feng refused to believe him. Jiang Feng told Yi Yoon not to talk about the never-ending time loop anymore. Yi Yoon then tried to find a way to explain about what happened to him. He said that it didn't make sense that he called the police and informed them about the bomb on the bus if he was the person responsible behind the bus explosion. Back to Si King, Si King told Zhang Cheng that she knew his name because he had introduced himself to her when he interrogated her at the hospital. She also remembered that Zhang Cheng opened the bottle of water by using his left hand because he couldn't do it with his right hand back then. Zhang Cheng was surprised when he heard that because his right hand was indeed injured right now. He was also confused because he didn't remember that he had met Si King before, let alone interrogating her or opening a bottle of water for her at the hospital. Si King said that Zhang Cheng would never remember about it because it happened in different time loop. She said that she had told the same thing to Zhang Cheng at the hospital. But Zhang Cheng also didn't believe her. Despite that, Zhang Cheng told her to continue to tell her story. He said that they would see if the police decided to believe her story or not. Si King finally told him about everything that she knew. Zhang Cheng was still confused when he heard that. In another interrogation room, He Yun was still trying to explain about what happened to him without mentioning about the never-ending time loop. But Jiang Feng still refused to believe in him. He was mad at him because he thought that Yi Yun was playing him. He asked Yi Yun if someone had threatened him to do this. He said that he would give another chance for Yi Yun to think and tell him about the truth. Yi Yun got frustrated when he heard that. He swore that he had told them about the truth. He had no idea how to convince the police to believe in him. Zhang Cheng asked Si King about the story that she told him. He asked her about the ringtone that she heard before the bus exploded. Si King suddenly realized that the ringtone might be a bomb timer that triggered the bomb to explode. But she was still not sure about that. She thought that she might hear that ringtone because someone received a call. After that, the police officers performed drug tests on Si King and Yi Yun. In another room, Zhang Cheng and his co-workers had a meeting. In that meeting, they discussed about the never-ending time loop that Si King and Yi Yun were talking about. They thought that Si King and Yi Yun were playing them. But Zhang Cheng said that there was no motive for Si King and Yi Yun to lie to them. He wondered why Si King and Yi Yun called the police and warned them about the bus explosion if they were responsible for that incident. The police had also investigated Si King and Yi Yun's social medias and found out that they weren't in any trouble. They also found out that Si King and Yi Yun weren't in any romantic relationships, and they didn't have any financial problems. Despite there was no motive for Si King and Yi Yun to blow up the bus, the police still found it suspicious that they got off right before the bus exploded. The deputy director of Jilin Public Security Bureau, Du Jin Song, asked Zhang Cheng and Jiang Feng to continue to interrogate Si King and Yi Yun. But this time, she asked Zhang Cheng to interrogate Yi Yun and asked Jiang Feng to interrogate Si King. Zhang Cheng then went to Yi Yun's room and gave a cup of coffee to Yi Yun. He told Yi Yun that the police would reduce his punishment if he told them about the truth. 
He even asked him if they found the bomb on the bus, but Zhang Cheng didn't answer his question. Zhang Cheng said that the police would reduce Yi Yun's punishment if he cooperated with them and told them about what really happened. He also said that the police would arrest Yi Yun and Si King if they found the bomb on the bus. Yi Yun asked Zhang Cheng about what Si King had said to him because he believed that Si King knew more about what was going on than him. Zhang Cheng said that Si King had agreed to cooperate with the police. Yi Yun was confused when he heard that. He remembered that Si King said that it was useless for them to tell the police about the truth because the police would never believe them. Yi Yun tried to convince Zhang Cheng that he had told everything to the police and that he didn't hide anything from them. He kept telling the police about what happened to him in different ways and his stories remained consistent. Zhang Cheng suspected that Si King was the one who instructed Yi Yun to create that story. In another interrogation room, Zhang Feng asked Si King to tell him about the truth. He said that Yi Yun had decided to cooperate with the police. Si King was confused when she heard that. Zhang Feng explained that Yi Yun admitted that he didn't know anything about the bus explosion. He said that he saw Si King forcing Yi Yun to get off the bus in the CCTV footage. He also said that the police would only accept Yi Yun's testimony if Si King refused to tell the police about the truth. Zhang Feng then showed Si King the paper that Yi Yun threw into the trash can. He asked her about the person who was responsible for the bus explosion and why they did that. Suddenly, Jin Song received information from her team at the crime scene. Zhang Cheng and Zhang Feng then left the interrogation rooms and asked Jin Song about the information that she had just received. Jin Song told them that their team managed to find the bomb fragments on the bus. She said that she would make the case open now, but she said that the police couldn't accept Si King and He Yun's testimonies about the never-ending time loop because it didn't make sense. She also said that Si King and He Yun would become the prime suspects of this case. After that, Jin Song, Zhang Cheng, and Zhang Feng went to He Yun's interrogation room and told He Yun that they would arrest him. He Yun was confused when he heard that. He asked them why they arrested him because he didn't have any motive to blow up the bus and he had never committed any crime. He said that the police didn't have any evidence that he was responsible for the bus explosion. Jin Song told him that they had found the bomb on the bus. Suddenly, Si King woke up from her sleep and found herself riding the same bus. The next scene revealed about the time when Zhang Feng and Zhang Cheng were walking down the street together. Zhang Feng had a master-student relationship with Zhang Cheng and had a deep relationship with him. Zhang Feng was very nervous because he was tasked to capture a group of criminals back then. Because of that, those criminals noticed Jiang Feng and realized that he was a police officer. Those criminals ran away and Jiang Feng chased them immediately. Jiang Feng managed to capture one of those criminals, but that criminal tried to attack him with his knife. But suddenly, Zhang Cheng and his team came to that place and saved Jiang Feng from that criminal. Zhang Cheng got injured in his hand because of that. Jiang Feng was worried when he saw that, but Zhang Cheng said that there was nothing to worry about. After that, Si King woke up from her sleep when the bus stopped at the bus stop. She saw Hee Yoon still sleeping next to her. She checked her phone and found out that it was 1.35. It meant that she woke up earlier than when she woke up in the previous cycle. She tried to wake Hee Yoon up, but Hee Yoon didn't wake up. But after a while, Hee Yoon finally woke up. The situation between Hee Yoon and Si King then became awkward. They decided not to do anything to get off the bus until the bus arrived at the traffic light. Hee Yoon began to move closer to Si King and apologize to her. Si King said that she didn't mind about it. Yi Yun said that he remembered that he was falling asleep while he was spending some time in dark room at the police station in the previous cycle. After he woke up, he found himself riding the same bus. Si King remembered that she also fell asleep in the previous cycle and concluded that they would stick in the never-ending time loop if they slept. Yi Yun also remembered that the police told him that they found a bomb on the bus. Si King then told everyone on that bus that there was a bomb in that place. But suddenly, that bus exploded and killed everyone on that bus. Not long after that, Yi Yun and Si King woke up from their sleep. They were confused about what happened in the previous cycle. It seemed that the bomb was detonated by someone on that bus. Yi Yun and Si King believed that the person who was responsible for the bus explosion was one of the bus passengers. They looked around and tried to guess who was the perpetrator. Suddenly, Yi Yun remembered that there was a bus passenger who looked very suspicious. Si King also remembered that bus passenger. He was a man who was wearing black clothes and a mask. But that bus passenger was not there yet because he hadn't gotten on the bus. They realized that the time was going backwards. Because of that, Yoon planned to get off the bus when it stopped at the next bus stop. Si King said that she would play the same ringtone that she heard when the bus was about to explode. She did that because she thought that the ringtone triggered the bomb to explode. So before she and Yoon got off the bus, she played the ringtone but nothing happened. Not long after that, the bus arrived at the bus stop. When Si King and Yoon got off the bus, they saw the suspicious passenger in black clothes and a mask entering the bus. 
After the bus left, C. King called the police and told them that the bus number 45 was going to explode. After that, she hung up the call right away. After the police received her call, they sent a team to check the bus number 45. C. King tried to approach Yi Yoon, but Yi Yoon asked her not to come near him. C. King was confused because of that. Yi Yoon also asked her to stay away from him, not to address him by his name, and acted like they didn't know each other. C. King was getting more confused when she heard that, but she did what he asked her. Yi Yoon was heading to a quiet place and C. King was following her. When they arrived in that place, C. King approached Yi Yoon and asked him why he avoided the security cameras. Yi Yoon said that he was mad at her because she called the police. C. King said that she just wanted the police to stop the bus explosion from happening. Yi Yoon said that he didn't want to go to the police station again. He thought that they could have left that place without getting arrested by the police if Yi Yoon didn't call the police. He said that he didn't blame C. King, but he regretted it that they couldn't take some time to find out about what was going on and decide about their next plan. Now that the police were after them, they didn't have much time to think about what they were going to do. But C. King believed that it would take a long time for the police to stop the bus explosion and arrive there. She thought that they had more information now, but Hee Yoon still had no idea about what was happening. Hee Yoon said that he still didn't know about what to tell to the police, he didn't know about where the bomb was and who put the bomb there. He said that the police would arrest them if they told them about the never-ending time loop. See, King felt guilty after she heard that. She blamed herself because she didn't think first before she called the police. She said that she called the police because she wanted to save all bus passengers. He even asked C. King why she wanted to save all bus passengers. He said that those passengers might be destined to die in that bus explosion and it was only them who was given the chance to stay alive. He assured C. King that they were not murderers and they shouldn't feel guilty about it. Then he tried to leave that place, but he suddenly felt guilty because he had been rude to see King. He then returned to see King and asked her to go to the bridge together to see if the police managed to stop the bus from exploding. See King was mad at him and he Yoon apologized to her. He Yoon said that he just wanted them to think and discuss about what they were going to do first before they took any action. See King thought that he Yoon didn't want to get involved in this problem. She said that if they still get stuck in the never-ending time loop, she would keep trying to find a way to save all bus passengers. She asked Yi Yoon if he still wanted to get on the bus, but Yi Yoon didn't answer her. She said that she would go to the police station alone because she still believed in the police. She also promised that she wouldn't mention anything about Yi Yoon to the police. She said that she believed that the police would help her to stop the bus explosion from happening. In another place, the police officers were blocking all roads that headed to the bridge. They also stopped the bus number 45 and asked all passengers to get off the bus. Jang Feng checked the bus and saw a passenger carrying a woven bag. He felt suspicious of that passenger and quickly seized him. But suddenly, the bus exploded. Zhang Cheng tried to communicate with Jiang Feng, but there was no any answer from him. Not far from there, Si King and Yi Yun saw the bus explosion. Si King told Yi Yun to leave and said that she would tell everything to the police. She promised that she wouldn't mention anything about Yi Yun to the police. She then turned on her phone and called the police. Yi Yun was surprised when he saw that he tried to stop Si King from doing that, but it was too late. C. King assured him that she could handle this problem alone by working together with the police. She then talked to the police on the phone and told them to pick her up. Yoon was mad at her because she didn't listen to him again. He said that it was important for them to think and discuss about what they were going to do first. C. King said that if they still got stuck in the never-ending time loop, she allowed Yoon to get off the bus so that he could stay alive and return to his normal life. Yoon said that he couldn't return to his normal life if he still got stuck in that never-ending time loop. Each time he woke up, he always found himself riding the same bus and saw Si King sitting next to him. Si King and Yi Yoon then got into an argument. They refused to listen to each other and thought that their plans were the best. Si King then tried to leave that place, but Yi Yoon chased her right away and asked her phone number. Si King gave him her phone number and stormed off. Si King left the park and waited for the police to pick her up there. Not long after that, the police officers arrived in that place. Yi Yoon secretly watched them from another place. Si King then went inside the police car and left that place. In the car, a police officer told Si King that Jiang Feng died in the bus explosion. Si King was surprised when she heard that. He Yun got frustrated as he had no idea about what he should do next. Suddenly, he received a call from his co-worker. His co-worker told him to go to the office soon because they would have a meeting with an investor. He said that he wouldn't accept any excuse from He Yun not to attend that meeting. After Yi Yun heard that, he finally decided to go to the office. Since all roads and accesses to the bridge were blocked, people couldn't go to the bridge and could only see what was going on there from afar. Yi Yoon headed to his office by using a bicycle. At the police station, a police officer was investigating Si King. Jin Song found out that Si King and Yi Yoon got off the bus at the same bus stop together. Jin Song ordered her subordinate to find information about Yi Yoon. Yi Yoon finally arrived at the office. 
Suddenly, he received a call from his coworker. His coworker berated him and told him to remove the violent contents from the game that they were developing. He argued that no investor wanted to invest in their game because of the violent contents in their game. He his coworker was mad at He Yoon because of that and asked him not to go to the office. After that, he hanged up the call and returned to the office. He Yoon then left that place. He suddenly remembered about what Si King said to him earlier. Si King said that the bus passengers who died in the bus explosion could feel pain. She also said that she would do her best to save those bus passengers if it was the last time for them to get stuck in the never-ending time loop. But if she still got stuck in the never-ending time loop, she would still do her best to save all on board. He Yoon then went to the nearby coffee shop and searched for information about the bus explosion on internet. He saw many comments from people who made their assumptions regarding the incident that had just happened. Some people blamed the bus driver because he smoked on the bus. He Yoon found out that a police officer named Jang Feng died in that bus explosion. At the police station, Jin Song interrogated Si King and Si King told her about the never-ending time loop. During the interrogation, Si King also mentioned Zhang Cheng's name. Zhang Cheng was surprised when he heard that. He believed that he had never met Si King before. He then went to the interrogation room and interrogated Si King. He asked her about the never-ending time loop that she was talking about and how she knew about him and Zhang Feng. Si King said that she always saw Zhang Cheng and Zhang Feng together. Zhang Cheng said that Zhang Feng had passed away and Si King apologized to him. Si King felt guilty because she thought that it was because of her that Zhang Feng died in that bus explosion. Zhang Cheng said that it was not her fault. Instead, he thanked her for calling the police because it was because of her call that the police managed to stop the bus and evacuate people from the bridge. He said that Si King had done the right thing by calling the police and informing them about the bomb on the bus. He asked Si King to cooperate with the police and tell them about the truth. Si King said that she had told everything to the police but nobody believed her. She had no idea about what she had to do anymore. Zhang Cheng asked her why she turned off her phone after she called the police. Si King said that she wanted the police to move fast and not waste time by calling her back and interrogating her on the phone. Zhang Cheng said that he heard Si King talking to someone before she hanged up the call. He also showed her the CCTV footage of her and Yoon getting off the bus together. He asked Si King about Yoon, but Si King said that she didn't know him. Suddenly, Si King received a call from an unknown number. The police traced that number right away. Zhang Cheng answered the call and asked Si King to talk to the person who made that call. Turned out, it was He Yoon who was calling her. Si King told He Yoon that they had broken up and asked him not to call her anymore. She tried to end the call, but Zhang Cheng stopped her from doing that. He Yoon was confused when he heard that, but he soon realized that Si King was being interrogated by the police. He then told Si King to go to sleep and promised that everything would be better after she went to sleep. After that, he hanged up the call and left that place. At the police station, a police officer showed Jin Song and Zhang Cheng the CCTV footage of He Yu showing up at the park after Si King left with the police. The police also found out that the unknown number that had just called Si King was He Yun's number. He Yun turned off his phone and asked a man there about a nearby pharmacy. That man told him about the route that he needed to take to go there. The police managed to trace He Yun's recent location. But when Zhang Cheng and his team arrived there, they found out that He Yun had left that place. He Yoon went to the nearby pharmacy and bought some sleeping pills. But when he was about to pay, he suddenly remembered that he didn't have any cash with him. He finally decided to turn on his phone so that he could finish the payment. Zhang Cheng and his team asked the owner of the coffee shop about He Yoon. That man told them that He Yoon visited his coffee shop and then left not long after that. He also said that He Yoon asked him about how to go to the nearby pharmacy. Suddenly, a police officer received a notification about He Yoon's recent location. Because Yoon turned on his phone, the police managed to detect his location. Yoon went to a convenience store to buy a bottle of wine. Zhang Chang and his team went to the pharmacy that Yoon visited before. They asked the worker there about Yoon, and that worker showed them where Yoon headed. Yoon went to an abandoned place and took some sleeping pills there. He hoped that he could fall asleep soon if he did that. At the police station, Jin Song asked Si King about what Yoon meant by telling her to go to sleep. Si King said that she and Yoon had just broken up. After that, Jin Song left that room. She ordered her subordinate to perform a drug test on Si King. In the interrogation room, Si King was trying to sleep. Zhang Cheng and his team finally managed to find He Yoon. They saw He Yoon getting drunk there. He Yoon told them that he didn't want to go to the police station again. Zhang Cheng asked He Yoon what he meant by saying that and He Yoon called him by his name. Zhang Cheng was getting more confused when he heard that. He then ordered his subordinates to take He Yoon to the police station. In the car, He Yoon was trying to sleep. While he was having a weird dream, Si King suddenly woke him up. He even woke up and found himself riding the same bus. It appeared that he was still stuck in the never-ending time loop. 
He didn't ask Si King if she was still mad at him. Si King told him that she was only mad at herself. She felt guilty because she thought that it was because of her that Jane Fang died in the bus explosion. She promised that she wouldn't call the police this time and agreed to discuss about what they were going to do first. He Yun also apologized to her because he left her alone. He said that they needed to gather more information first before they called the police. Si King said that she wanted to check the bags that were carried by all bus passengers. He Yun also said that he wouldn't get off the bus at the next bus stop. He assured that they needed to listen to each other and work together as partners if they wanted to solve this mystery. When the bus arrived at the bus stop, a passenger in black clothes and a mask got on the bus. That man took a seat at the back of the bus. He Yun and Si King felt suspicious of that man. So they planned a strategy. They pretended that they were a couple who were having a fight. Si King pretended to be angry at He Yun and moved to the seat next to that suspicious passenger. After Si King moved, she tried to give signals to He Yun to make a move, but He Yun had no idea about what he should do. Other passengers noticed that Si King and He Yun were mad at each other. Si King kept giving signals to He Yun, and He Yun finally understood that Si King told him to check that suspicious passenger's bag. But suddenly, when the bus arrived at the bridge, an explosion happened and killed everyone on the bus. He Yun and Si King woke up from their sleep and found themselves riding the same bus. They were tired and confused about what they needed to do anymore. Si King asked Yun not to waste time anymore. When the bus stopped at the next stop, the passenger in black clothes and a mask got on the bus. That man took out his phone and took a picture of something. He Yun got up from his chair and suddenly berated that man. He accused that man of taking a picture of his girlfriend secretly and asked him to apologize to him and his girlfriend. That man tried to run away from him. Other passengers were confused when they saw them. A human C. King stopped at the man in black clothes from getting off the bus and asked the bus driver to stop the bus. The bus driver finally stopped the bus when they arrived at the traffic light. C. King asked the bus driver to be careful of any motorcycle or oil tanker that he saw at the crossroads. Suddenly, the man in black clothes had breathing difficulty. A passenger tried to find her medicine to help that man. Other passengers panicked when they saw that man suffering and tried to help him. Si King and Yun tried to take that man's bag, but he didn't let them do it. The bus driver finally pulled over and the bus passengers tried to help that man to get off the bus. But suddenly, an explosion happened and killed everyone on the bus. Si King and Yun woke up from their sleep and found themselves riding the same bus. They needed to find another way to stop the bus explosion. They also needed to find out if the man in black clothes had bomb inside his bag. He Yun suggested that they stop that man from getting on the bus and Si King agreed. When the bus arrived at the bus stop, Si King and He Yun executed their plan to prevent that man from getting on the bus. He Yun got off the bus through the back door and Si King stood at the front door, blocking that man to get on the bus. While Si King was distracting that man's attention, He Yun suddenly grabbed that man's hands and took him with him. That man tried to run away from him but He Yun refused to let him go. Other bus passengers were confused when they saw them. They thought that they were friends and they were only joking around. While He Yun was holding that man, Si King opened that man's bag and found a cat inside. The cat jumped out of the bag and ran away. The man in black clothes chased it immediately. He Yun and Si King helped him to catch the cat. After a while, they finally managed to capture the cat. They returned it to the man in black clothes. The man in black clothes was named Lu Di. Si King and He Yun apologized to Lu Di and said that they lost He Yun's bag on the bus. He Yun said that his bag looked like Lu Di's bag and thought that Lu Di had stolen his bag. Suddenly, an explosion happened not far from that place. He Yun and Si King were surprised when they saw that. They told Lu Di that they needed to leave soon. Lu Di was confused when he saw that explosion. He found it weird that He Yun and Si King left that place after the bus explosion happened. While walking away, He Yun and Si King concluded that Lu Di was not the perpetrator. They realized that Lu Di kept his bag tight because the bus passengers were not allowed to bring Pet on the bus. Si King thought that Ludi was going to get stuck in the never-ending time loop too because he got off the bus. She believed that Ludi could help them to solve this mystery. But He Yun said that Ludi hadn't even gotten on the bus, so technically he didn't get off the bus. Ludi went to the animal shelter and took the cat there. In that place, he watched the news about the explosion that happened on the bus number 45, the bus that he almost used before. He Yun and Si King went to a nearby coffee shop and discussed about their next strategy there. He Yun thought that they would wake up and find themselves riding the same bus after they fell asleep. Because of that, everything that they did in this time loop would mean nothing. So he suggested them to just have fun and spend all their money to buy things that they wanted. He interpreted it as buying remarkable experience. Si King agreed with his idea. She finally decided to order a lot of delicious food at that coffee shop. Ludi went to the location where the bus exploded. 
He remembered that when he tried to get on the bus earlier, Si King and He Yoon prevented him from getting on the bus. At the coffee shop, Si King and He Yoon were enjoying their meals. Si King felt guilty because they decided to get involved in self-indulgent activity instead of solving their big problem. He Yoon said that they needed a lot of energy to solve their big problem. Si King was happy when she heard that and continued to enjoy her meals. He Yoon then searched for information about the bus explosion on the internet. He told Si King that they could use their time to find more information about what was happening to them. Suddenly, He Yoon received a call from his co-worker. His co-worker asked him to go to the office soon but He Yoon rejected his call. Si King told him to just attend the meeting because they had a lot of time and the police weren't after them. But He Yoon refused to leave her because they needed to solve this mystery together. He also asked her to go to the police station together if they had gathered enough evidence to prove the police about what was happening to them. For right now, he suggested them to look into the list of the bus passengers to find any clue. He thought that they might find a criminal among those bus passengers and they needed to suspect that person. He also realized that the time would reset to when they woke up on the bus if they fell asleep at the same time. But if it was only one of them who fell asleep, then they would only have a dream. Eun called it a standby mode. He concluded that if they fell asleep at the same time, the standby mode would end, and the time would reset to when they woke up on the bus. In the evening, many people still gather at the crime scene. Some media social influencers came to that place and live-streamed that incident. In those live streams, they told their followers about how their friend died in that bus explosion. He Yoon and Si King watched those live streams and went to the crime scene. They saw many people putting flowers and remembering the victims of the bus explosion there. He Yoon and Si King watched the last live stream of the influencer who died in the bus explosion. Suddenly, Lu Di came to that place and approached them. He asked them if they stopped him from getting on the bus. Si King and He Yoon said that they didn't do that, but Lu Di didn't believe them. Lu Di believed that Si King and He Yoon knew that the bus would explode and they stopped him from getting on the bus to save him. Luvi tried to call the police, but Si King and He Yoon stopped him right away. Si King and He Yoon said that they couldn't tell him about what was happening. Lu Di then asked them to go to some place with him. At the police station, the police officers found out that the bus exploded because it crashed into an oil tanker and it exploded at 1.43. They also found the bomb fragments on the bus. They decided to conduct further investigation to find the people responsible for the bus explosion. They had identified all victims of the bus explosion and planned to interrogate the bus passengers who got off the bus. Turned out, Lu Di took He Yoon and Si King to his secret place. He Yoon and Si King saw many cats in that place. Lu Di greeted one of those cats. Si King asked Lu Di why he kept cats in his place even though he suffered from asthma. Lu Di said that he had always loved cats, but his mother never allowed him to keep cats in their place. So he decided to keep those cats secretly. Suddenly, Lu Di realized that Si King knew about his asthma. He asked her how she knew that he suffered from asthma even though they had never met before. He Yoon and Si King got awkward when they heard his question. Lu Di asked them to tell him about what was happening. Si King finally decided to tell him about the never-ending time loop. She also told him that she and He Yoon didn't prevent him from getting on the bus because they lost a bag, but because they wanted to check his bag. She explained that they wanted to see if there was any bomb inside his bag because the last time they were checking his bag, the bus suddenly exploded. They said that they kept doing the same mistakes and always returned to the time when they woke up on the bus. They admitted that they were still trying to find the person who carried the bomb on the bus. Ludi was confused when he heard that. He said that people usually got stuck in a never-ending time loop in August and not in May. Turned out, Ludi was a fan of Anime. He remembered that there was an Anime that told a story about a never-ending time loop. In that Anime, it was told that the never-ending time loop always happened in August, the eighth month of the year because eight resembled the symbol of infinity. Ludai said that he believed in what Si King and He Yoon told him about the never-ending time loop. He Yoon was confused when he heard that. He doubted that Ludi believed them that easily. Ludi was glad that he met them because he thought that he became a part of the big mission to save the world. He said that he wanted to join Si King and He Yoon to solve this mystery. The three of them then discussed about the person who might carry the bomb on the bus. Ludai said that he didn't remember anything about that person. He Yoon tried to help him to remember that person by drawing the bus and all the bus passengers. He remembered that there were a man who was wearing a headphone, a social media influencer, an old man who carried a woven bag, a woman who carried a red plastic bag, a woman who carried a satchel full of medicines, and a man who carried a large suitcase. Luby wondered why that man carried his suitcase even though the bus number 45 didn't head to the airport nor the train station. He Yoon and Si King also felt suspicious of that man. Suddenly, Lu Dae received a call from his mother. After Lu Dai hanged up the call, he told Si King and He Yoon that he needed to leave because his mother told him to go home soon. Because of that, the group had to end their meeting and left that place. 
Since Lu Di trusted Si King and He Yun, he let them to stay in his place and told them about the code for the door lock. He said that if he got stuck in the never-ending time loop too, he would believe in Si King and He Yun with one condition. That condition was that they needed to call him by his nickname, which was Lu the Cat's Apostle and Asthma Conqueror. After saying that, Lu Di left that place. Si King was happy when she heard that. She was glad that there was someone who believed in them. After that, Si King and He Yun went to the nearby Internet Cafe Hotel. They searched for information about the bus explosion there. Lu Di finally returned home and tried to have a dinner with his family. But suddenly, Lu Di's mother noticed that there was cat hair in his t-shirt. His mother was mad at him because of that. She berated him for keeping cats behind her back. She didn't want Lu Di to keep cats anymore because it was not good for his health as he suffered from asthma. Lu Di was mad when he heard that. He tried to convince his mother that he was in a good condition and keeping cats didn't affect his health. He said that he still took his medicines and didn't do physical activities that might damage his physical health. He said that he was lonely and didn't have any friends because he always obeyed his mother and his doctor. He also said that he always wore a mask every time he went out, and it infuriated him to think that people might think of him as a freak because of that. But Lu Dai said that he didn't care about all those things. He was pretty happy with his life as long as he had cats around him. He said that he would do anything for his mother to allow him to keep cats. But his mother still refused to allow him to keep cats no matter what. Lu Di was mad and disappointed when he heard that. He left the dining room and went to his room. Lu Di's mother tried to berate him again, but she suddenly heard Lu Di having breathing difficulty in his room. Lu Di's father was worried when he heard that, but he believed that Lu Di was going to be all right. He asked his wife to leave Lu Di alone. In his room, Lu Di wrote about what Si King and He Yun told him earlier in his diary. He wrote about the never-ending time loop and about him who once died in the bus explosion. At the police station, Jin Song and his team watched the CCTV footage of He Yun and Si King stopping Lu Dai from getting on the bus. After Jin Song watched that CCTV footage, she asked her team to find Si King and He Yun. Zhang Feng called Lu Di and asked him to go to the police station. He told him that the police needed to interrogate him about the fight that happened between him and two bus passengers at the bus stop that day. Lu Di agreed to go to the police station and left his room. When he got out of his room, his mother asked him about his condition. Lu Di's mother was worried about his condition and asked him not to go out. Lu Dai said that he needed to go to the police station soon. His parents were surprised when they heard that. Lu Di explained that the police needed to interrogate him because he almost got on the bus number 45 that exploded that day. Lu Di's mother was mad when she heard that. She was mad because Lu Di didn't tell her earlier that he almost put himself in danger. Lu Di's father told Lu Di that he would go with him to the police station. Lu Di's mother also wanted to go with them, but her husband asked her to just stay at home. After that, Lu Di and his father headed to the police station together. In the car, Lu Di remembered that he wrote in his diary that he almost died in the bus explosion. He kept thinking about it, and he believed that the god had chosen him and given him a chance to live. Even though people thought of him as a friendless freak who suffered from asthma, Lu Di believed that he had a purpose in this world, and that purpose was to save the world. In his diary, he also wrote about the address of his headquarters. He was afraid if he died during his mission to save the world. He wrote many things in his diary and some of them were the secrets that he kept from his parents. He wrote that he was pretty happy with his life and he thanked his parents for always protecting him. He also mentioned Si King and He Yun in his diary. He said that they were his new friends who came from the parallel universe. At home, Lu Di's mother went to Lu Di's room and found his diary. She read that diary and was surprised by what she was reading there. At the Internet Cafe Hotel, Si King and He Yun were still searching for information about the bus explosion. They found an article about the bus driver. In that article, it was said that the bus driver was known as a good and a diligent person. Some people gave their testimonies about him. One of them said that the bus driver once returned the passenger's bag that was accidentally left on the bus. Si King said that she often used the bus number 45 to commute and agreed that the bus driver was a kind-hearted person. He Yun believed that they could save everyone on the bus. He then watched the last live stream of the influencer who died in the bus explosion again. In that live stream, he suspected a passenger who sat at the back of the bus. Si King said that even though that passenger looked suspicious, they couldn't judge him by his appearance. They needed to learn from their experience because they once suspected Lu Di for wearing suspicious clothes, but turned out Lu Di was not the perpetrator. Suddenly, He Yun received a call from the police. The police asked him to go to the police station because they needed to interrogate him about the fight that happened between him and Lu Di at the bus stop. He Yun and Si King were confused when they heard that. They were worried if the police suspected them. He Yun then read the official article about the bus explosion that was released by the police. In that article, the police didn't mention anything about the bomb. Because of that, he asked Si King not to say anything about the bomb when the police interrogated them. 
He was worried that the police would suspect them if they told them about the bomb. He was also worried that the police would interrogate Lu Di because they saw the CCTV footage of him and Si King stopping Lu Dai from getting on the bus at the bus stop. Si King and Yu were afraid that Lu Di would tell the police about the never-ending time loop when the police interrogated him. At the police station, some police officers were interrogating Lu Di. Lu Di told them that Si King and Hee Yoon stopped him from getting on the bus because they thought that he had stolen Hee Yoon's bag. He managed to convince the police that he didn't know Si King and Hee Yoon personally with his story. He continued telling his story and said that he was actually mad at Si King and Hee Yoon for searching his bag without his permission. But since Si King and Hee Yoon helped him to find his cat, he finally forgave them. John Cheng told him that Si King and Hee Yoon would arrive at the police station and the police would interrogate them too. Lu Di was nervous when he heard that. Zhang Cheng and Jiang Feng then left the interrogation room. Zhang Cheng said that he thought that Lu Di was hiding something from them. He didn't believe that Lu Di didn't know Si King and Hee Yoon personally. Zhang Cheng asked Jiang Feng to ask Si King and Hee Yoon about what they found on the bus. At the prison, a prisoner received a visit from his wife. That prisoner asked his wife why their son didn't visit him at the prison. He happily told his wife that he would be released from the prison in two months because he had his prison sentence reduced. But his wife asked him not to return home because she and her son had been living a hard life because of him. She said that she and her son had been mistreated and ostracized by people around them because her husband was a murderer. She said that she and her son had moved to a new house and asked her husband not to contact them anymore. Her husband was sad when he heard that. After that, that prisoner's wife left that place. Turned out that prisoner was one of the bus passengers who died in the bus explosion. Si King and Hee Yoon finally arrived at the police station. In the interrogation room, Zhang Cheng told Si King that everyone on the bus died in the bus explosion. He said that the police asked Si King and Hee Yoon to go to the police station because they needed to interrogate them about the situation on the bus before they got off the bus. Si King admitted that she was surprised when she heard about the bus explosion. She said that she and Hee Yoon got off the bus because they saw Lu Di wearing a bag that looked like Hee Yoon's bag. She said that Hee Yoon lost his bag on the bus and thought that Lu Di was the one who stole his bag. Si King felt nervous when she was telling that story but she tried her best to look calm. In another room, Jiang Feng was interrogating Hee Yoon. Hee Yoon didn't tell him anything about the never-ending time loop. He only told him that he suspected a passenger who carried a large suitcase and a passenger who carried a woven bag who sat in front of him. Si King also told Zhang Cheng about those passengers. Zhang Cheng showed Si King the pictures of those passengers and Si King said that they were the ones whom she suspected. Si King also showed Zhang Cheng the last live stream of the influencer who died in the bus explosion. In that live stream, there was a passenger who looked suspicious and nervous. After that, Zhang Cheng and Zhang Feng had a meeting with other police officers. In that meeting, Zhang Cheng told Jin Song that Si King and Hee Yoon were very cooperative with them, and he felt suspicious of them because of that. He also said that Si King and Hee Yoon weren't supposed to know that much information about the case. He found it weird that Si King and Hee Yoon suspected a passenger who carried a woven bag even though they admitted that they didn't know anything about the bomb on the bus. He said that a normal passenger wouldn't pay that much attention about the situation on the bus. Jin Song read the document about the passenger who was suspected by Si King and Hee Yoon. In that document, it was revealed that that passenger was an ex-convict who was sent to prison because of a deadly hit-and-run crash, which caused the victim to die. That passenger was named Hu King. It was also revealed that Go King spent most of his time by gardening after he was released from the prison. Zhang Cheng suggested Jin Song to just let Si King go and keep He Yoon and Lu Di at the police station because there were some questions that he wanted to ask them. Zhang Cheng felt that something went wrong with this whole situation. The family members of the victims who died in the bus explosion came to the police station. They cried and looked very saddened by the deaths of their family members. Go King's wife and son also came to the police station. A police officer took them to a room and interrogated them there. Suddenly, Zhang Cheng came to that room and asked Wu King's son, Xiao Long, to go with him to another room. Wu King's wife, Ke Kai, was worried when she heard that, but her son convinced her that everything would be alright. Si King was walking past the room where the family members of the victims of the bus explosion gathered and cried. She heard a police officer named Yi Chen asking Ke Kai about her husband. A police officer who escorted Si King told her that she was allowed to leave the police station. Si King asked him if she could stay and wait for Hee Yoon there and that police officer allowed her to do that. After that police officer left her, Si King continued to listen to the conversation between Yi Chan and Ke Kai. In another room, Zhang Cheng was interrogating Xia Long. Xia Long admitted that he didn't know that his father was planning to see him because they hadn't talked for a long time. He only remembered that his father once called him and told him that he wanted to visit him, 
But he told him not to do that because he didn't want to be associated with a murderer. Jia Long then told Zhang Cheng about the hit-and-run crash that was committed by his father. He said that he and his mother had to spend a lot of money for Gu Qing's trial. He also said that he and Gu Qing hadn't talked anymore since Gu Qing stayed at the prison. After Gu Qing was released from the prison, he often told his son that he wanted to visit him, but his son had never allowed him to do that. Turned out, the victim who died in the hit-and-run crash that was committed by Gu Qing was a classmate of Xiao Long. Because of that, Xiao Long and his mother needed to pay compensation for the victim's family. But until that day, they hadn't completed the compensation payment. Xiao Long said that he didn't know if the victim's family threatened his father or not. He wondered if the crime that was committed by his father had something to do with the bus explosion that killed his father. Zhang Cheng said that the police were still investigating that. After that, he asked Xiao Long to tell his mother to come to that room. Sti King tried to approach Kekai, but she failed to do that. Suddenly, Xiao Long came to that place and calmed his mother who had been worried about him. He told his mother that the police officer only asked him about the compensation that they needed to pay to the victim's family. He thought that the police officer interrogated him to find out if there was someone who wanted to take revenge on Go King. Kekai was getting more worried when she heard that. Xiao Long told her that it was all in the past and asked her not to talk about it anymore. He said that Go King had passed away so there was nothing that they needed to worry about. Kekai was afraid if the bus explosion happened because of her late husband. She was afraid that the family members of the victims would force her to pay the compensation if it was true that the bus exploded because of her late husband. Suddenly, Yi Chen approached her and helped Xiao Long to calm her down. Xiao Long asked Yi Chen to accompany his mother when Zhang Cheng interrogated her later and Yi Chen agreed. After that, Xiao Long left that place and went to the restroom. Si King suddenly got up from her chair and followed Xiao Long. Si King saw his nambag and called him by his name. She told him that she was a passenger of the bus number 45 who survived the incident. She said that when she was on the bus, she saw Gu Qing carrying a woven bag. She believed that the woven bag contained a watermelon. Xiao Long blamed himself for the death of his father. Si King was confused when she heard that. Xiao Long explained that his father, Gu Qing, served seven years in the prison. And when Gu Qing was released from the prison, he was ostracized by society. Xiao Long felt guilty because he thought that his father rode that bus because he wanted to see him. At the same time, Lu Di's mother arrived at the police station. She rushed to the room where Lu Di was being interrogated and confronted her son about what he was writing in his diary. Lu Di's father and the police officers tried to calm her down. But Lu Di's mother couldn't calm down and kept talking about the explosion that Lu Di wrote in his diary. Zhang Cheng checked Lu Di's diary and got surprised by what he was reading there. He then asked Yi Chan to interrogate Si King and He Yu in different rooms. Suddenly, Si King received a call from Yi Qian. Yi Xian asked her to return to the police station soon. Zhang Feng asked Yu to go to the interrogation room with him. Lu Di was mad at his mother because she had violated his privacy by reading his diary without his permission. Lu Di's father was also mad at his wife. He said that even though she was worried about their son, it was not right for her to read his diary, let alone to make a scene about it in public. But Lu Di's mother said that he should be glad that she read his diary. She thought that Lu Di wrote his diary as his suicide note, and they might lose their son any time if she didn't read it. Lu Di got up from his chair and complained to his mother. He told his mother that she had never cared about his feeling. He said that what his mother had done to him all this time was imprisoning him and not protecting him. He said that he was happy with his life decision. Lu Di's mother was angry when she heard that. She called Lu Di ungrateful child. Lu Di's father was getting more mad at his wife and asked her to be quiet. He told her that everyone had a secret, including their son, and they needed to respect his privacy. Ludi was confused when his father said that he knew that he had a secret place. Ludi's father continued to berate his wife and said that she had never respected Ludi's decision. He then forced his wife to leave that place. After that, he returned to the room and told Ludi that parents were just like their children. He said that just like Ludi, he also had his own hobby, liked to watch films, and had his favorite singers. After Ludi's father said that, Ludi hugged him tightly. Ludi was happy because for the first time in his life, he finally knew that someone understood him. Ludi's father asked him to cooperate with the police and wished the best for him. After that, he left that place. Meanwhile, He Yun and Si King were being interrogated in different rooms. The police officers told them that Lu Di gave them information about the bus explosion. He Yun asked them about what information that they received from Lu Di. Si King finally decided to tell the police officers that she was stuck in the never-ending time loop. The police officer also took Lu Di to the interrogation room. Lu Di believed that he would get stuck in the never-ending time loop too soon. He believed that he would become a hero and save the world. Zhang Cheng asked Lu Di to stop playing around and not to waste time. In his room, Yi Yu began to feel sleepy. 
Jiang Feng asked him to tell him about the truth. Yi Yun told him that he was stuck in a never-ending time loop, but Jiang Feng didn't believe in what he said. Yi Yun was tired with this situation and finally decided to sleep. Si King also began to feel sleepy and decided to sleep. Suddenly, Si King and Yi Yun woke up and found themselves riding the same bus. Yi Yun told Si King that the police asked them to go to the police station because of Lu Dai. He remembered that Jiang Feng told him that the police found Lu Di's diary and found out about the never-ending time loop. Si King told him about the clue that she found. She said that Go King, the passenger who carried the woven bag, was an ex-convict. She suggested Yi Yun that they check the woven bag that Go King carried. Yi Yun then got up from his chair and approached Go King. Go King pulled his woven bag closer to him when Yi Yun approached him. After that, Yi Yun returned to his seat. Yi Yun and Si King believed that there was something important inside that woven bag because of how Go King kept that woven bag carefully. Suddenly, the bus arrived at the bus stop. Yi Yun and Si King suddenly remembered about Lu Dei. When Lu Di got on the bus, Yi Yun and Si King approached and greeted him. But it appeared that Lu Di didn't recognize them. Yi Yun and Si King were confused when they saw that. They concluded that Lu Di didn't enter the time loop. Yi Yun told Si King that they would only waste their time if they explained everything to Lu Di. So he suggested that they tried to solve this mystery by themselves like how it was before. Yi Yun and Si King then created a new plan. They pretended that they missed the bus stop and opened the map. While Yi Yun was reading the map, he purposely stepped on Gu King's woven bag. Gu King was angry because of that. But suddenly, he apologized Yi Yun because he had yelled at him. He said that he was just mad that his watermelon got broken. The social media influencer who rode that bus live-streamed the situation on that bus. Gu King tried to help Yi Yun, but other bus passengers thought that Yi Yun didn't deserve to be helped because he had broken his watermelon. Gu King apologized to everyone because he had made them uncomfortable. Yi Yun began to exaggerate his acting and Si King quickly stopped him before he ruined everything. Si King then approached Gu Qing and apologized to him. She said that she wanted to buy the broken watermelon, but Gu Qing said that he didn't sell watermelons. Gu Qing told her that he planned to give those watermelons to his son. Si King was surprised when she heard that. She felt guilty because she had suspected the wrong person. Suddenly, she told Gu Qing that she knew his son. She said that she knew that Gu Qing's son was named Xie Long and they worked at the same office. Go King was happy when he heard that. He apologized to Si King and Si King apologized to him again. Go King admitted that he hadn't seen his son for a long time. He said that his friend once told him about the post that Xie Long uploaded on his social media. In that post, Xie Long said that it had been a long time for him to eat watermelon. Because of that, Go King planned to see his son and give some watermelons to him. He said that he really wanted to see his son. Si King told him that his son Xie Long had been wanting to see him too. Go King was getting more happy when he heard that. He thanked Si King for being a good friend to his son. He then gave a piece of watermelon to Si King. He also gave some pieces of watermelon to everyone on that bus. Si King helped him to give those pieces of watermelon to other bus passengers. Everyone looked happy and enjoyed eating the watermelon. But suddenly, Si King heard the ringtone that she heard before. Si King then told Gu Qing that his son Xiao Long really loved him and he didn't try to avoid him. After she said that, the bus suddenly exploded. After that, Si King and Hi Yun woke up and found themselves riding the same bus. Since Gu Qing was not the perpetrator, Si King and Hi Yun now suspected Shang Rong, the passenger who carried a suitcase, and Ying Hong, the passenger who carried a red plastic bag. They found it more suspicious that Shang Rong and Ying Hong got on the bus at the same bus stop. In the evening, at a small restaurant, a group of construction workers was discussing about their situation and what would happen to them. They felt desperate because they had been fired from their work and it was so difficult for them to find a new job. The man who was wearing a maroon t-shirt, Shang Rong, said that he had a daughter and he needed to find a new job. His friend suggested him to apply as a food delivery courier. Suddenly, one of those men got into an argument with a worker there. That man tried to pay for their food, but his money wasn't enough. His friends approached him and tried to calm them down when they saw that. The next day, Shang Rong returned to his house. Turned out he was living in a garage of someone else's house. But since there was a new law that prohibited a house owner from renting their garage, the house owner approached Shang Rong and told him to leave that place soon. Shang Rong thought that the house owner told him to leave because he hadn't paid his rent. Because of that, he asked him to give him some time to find some money. He promised that he would pay his rent in two days. The house owner said that he wanted him to leave that place not because he hadn't paid his rent, but because there was a new law that prohibited a house owner from renting their garage. He said that the police would check everyone's houses that day and he didn't want to put himself in danger. After Shang Rong heard that, he took out all his money and gave those money to the house owner. He asked the house owner to let him stay there for a while, but the house owner insisted on telling him to leave that place. Shang Rong was sad when he heard that. 
He finally began to pack his bags. After that, he left that place and got on the bus number 45. On the bus, a Yoon and C came were watching him and suspecting him because he was the only bus passenger who didn't eat Go King's watermelon. He also noticed that Shang Rong and Ying Hong didn't care about everything that happened around them. Si King thought that Shang Rong and Ying Hong were partners, but he Yu doubted that because they didn't sit next to each other. Si King wondered about what were inside Shang Rong's suitcase and Ying Hong's red plastic bag. Si King then got up from her chair and approached Ying Hong. She asked Ying Hong if she had any menstrual pads with her and Ying Hong said that she didn't have any menstrual pads. Si King asked her if she could check her red plastic bag because she believed that Ying Hong kept some menstrual pads there. Ying Hong said that Si King couldn't do that. She was mad at her and refused to talk to her anymore. Si King finally found out that Ying Hong's red plastic bag contained a pressure cooker. She was surprised and confused when she saw that. She asked Ying Hong why she had a pressure cooker with her. Ying Hong told her that she needed it to keep some cooked meat. After Si King heard that, she returned to her seat. She told Yoon about Ying Hong's pressure cooker. She said that she found it weird that Ying Hong kept some cooked meat inside a pressure cooker. Yoon thought that it was normal because his family once went on a picnic and they used a pressure cooker to keep some cooked meat. But Si King said that she didn't sniff cooked meat odor from Ying Hong's pressure cooker. Instead, she sniffed something else. She thought that the odor might come from the seasoning. Si King and He Yun then concluded that Ying Hong was not the person who carried the bomb. They finally decided to see if Shan Rong was the person who carried the bomb. He Yun suggested Si King that they got rid of Shan Rong's suitcase when the bus stopped at the next bus stop. If there was no bomb inside Shan Rong's suitcase, then it meant that Ying Hong was the person who carried the bomb. While the bus was about to arrive at the bus stop, Si King and He Yun got up from their seat. But suddenly, Shan Rong touched Si King and opened his suitcase. Turned out his suitcase contained his personal daily necessities. Shang Rong unpacked his suitcase and took out some menstrual pads that he put underneath other items there. He then gave those menstrual pads to Si King. He Yun looked at Ying Hong and began to suspect her. When the bus finally stopped at the bus stop, He Yun tried to grab the red plastic bag that Ying Hong put under her feet and watched closely. But suddenly Ying Hong detonated the bomb. The next scene revealed about the time before Shang Rong got on the bus. The house owner returned to the garage and gave a large red suitcase to Shang Rong. He said that the suitcase belonged to his wife, but his wife didn't use it anymore. Shang Rong thanked him and opened the suitcase. He found some items inside that suitcase and one of them was a bag of menstrual pads. He took those menstrual pads and planned to give them to his daughter. Shang Rong then began to pack his things. He planned to stay at his friend's place for a while. After he finished packing his bags, he called his daughter. He tried to convince his daughter that everything was alright and asked her to study well. But his daughter said that she wanted to quit school so that she could help him to earn money and pay off their family's debt. Shang Rong was mad when he heard that. He told his daughter to just focus on her study, but his daughter hanged up the call. Shang Rong tried to call his daughter again, but he was unable to make a call. After that, Shang Rong left that place. While he was heading to the bus stop, he ran into Ying Hong, the woman who carried the red plastic bag. Shang Rong saw Ying Hong struggling to carry her red plastic bag. So he offered her a help, but Ying Hong said that she could do it by herself. After that, Ying Hong and Shang Rong waited for the bus at the bus stop together. Not long after that, the bus arrived in that place. Shang Rong asked the bus driver to open the bus door. While Shang Rong and Ying Hong were getting on the bus, Si King suddenly woke up from her sleep and heard coins dropping. Si King was surprised when she realized that Ying Hong was the person who carried the bomb. Si King saw He Yun sleeping and tried to wake him up, but Yun didn't wake up. Si King panicked because of that. Other bus passengers approached her and helped her to wake He Yun up, but He Yun still didn't wake up. Si King checked He Yun's breath and found out that He Yun had breathing difficulty. Other bus passengers thought that He Yun was in a critical condition. They asked the bus driver to stop the bus and plan to take He Yun to the hospital. But suddenly, He Yun woke up from his sleep. He said that he was alright. He admitted that he couldn't move his body when he was sleeping. Other bus passengers suggested Si King to take He Yun to the hospital. Si King told Yi Yun that she was really worried as she thought that he couldn't be saved. Yi Yun said that he could hear her, but he couldn't move his body as if he was stuck in a standby mode. Si King thought that she couldn't imagine if she lost Yi Yun, and she had to get through all of this alone. She also noticed that she had been waking up at the same time since the last few cycles, not a minute earlier like how it used to. It meant that the time didn't go backward when the bomb entered the bus. She believed that it was the last cycle which meant that it was the last chance for them to get off the bus and save all on board. She didn't know about what she should do anymore. He even suggested that they got off the bus when it stopped at the next bus stop. Si Kin confessed that she was actually afraid of death. 
But to think that everyone on bus was as afraid as her, she wanted to save all of them and wanted them to stay alive. She didn't think of those passengers as strangers, but as friends and family members to her. While the bus was approaching the next bus stop, Si King finally decided that she wouldn't get off the bus. Yi Yoon got up from his chair and grabbed Si King's hand. When the bus door was open, Si King told Yi Yoon to give her some time because she needed to find Yi Yoon's flash drive. Yi Yoon then pretended to look for his flash drive too. But when he was close to Yang Hong's seat, he quickly grabbed the red plastic bag and tried to steal it. But suddenly, Yang Hong took out her knife and stabbed Yi Yoon with it. Everybody on the bus panicked when they saw that. Si King tried to help Yi Yoon, but Yang Hong stopped her right away. Yang Hong stabbed Si King with her knife. Si King died slowly because of that. Other passengers scream in horror when they saw that none of them had the courage to stop Yang Hong. After Yang Hong killed Si King, she detonated the bomb that she carried. The bomb finally exploded and Yoon woke up on the bus. Turned out it was not the last cycle. Yoon saw Si King sleeping and woke her up. Si King woke up and sobbed as she still remembered vividly about what she experienced in the previous cycle. Yoon hugged her and tried to calm her down. Other passengers were confused when they saw them. After a while, Si King finally managed to calm down. Yoon suggested that they just got off the bus when the bus stopped at the next bus stop and not to think about this whole never-ending time loop for a while. Yoon believed that it was not the last cycle, and that they would wake up on the bus again after they fell asleep. The bus finally arrived at the bus stop. While Yoon and Si King were getting off the bus, Si King told Yoon that she wanted to try again. Si King then walked toward Ying Hong's seat and tried to grab the red plastic bag, but Ying Hong suddenly took out her knife and tried to stab Si King. But fortunately, Yoon stopped Ying Hong right away. Yoon and Ying Hong then got into a fight. Si King used that moment to grab the red plastic bag. Yoon was still struggling to stop Ying Hong, but suddenly, he accidentally stabbed her with her knife. Yoon panicked as he realized that he had just murdered a person. Everybody on the bus were shocked when they saw that. People who waited at the bus stop also looked scared of Yoon. In that situation, Yoon threw the knife and left the bus. He also took Si King with him. But while the Yoon and Si King were walking away, the bus suddenly exploded. It seemed that Yoon didn't care about it anymore. Si King also didn't say anything when Yoon took her with him. The next scene revealed about the life of Ying Hong. Just like Shang Rong, Ying Hong also lived in a garage. While she was cleaning her place, people suddenly came to that place because they heard that there was a fire. Ying Hong told them that the fire had been extinguished. People believed that the fire was caused by an electrical current. After they made sure that everything was alright, they finally left that place. Ying Hong continued to clean that place. After that, she returned to her room and watched the moon from her window. At the police station, Zhang Cheng and his team were watching the CCTV footage of Si King and He Yoon getting off the bus. They suspected Si King and He Yoon because not long after they got off the bus, the bus suddenly exploded. Yi Chen said that someone called the police and reported that there had been a murder on the bus number 45, but that person didn't say anything about the bomb. Jin Song believed that Si King and He Yoon were the people responsible for the bus explosion. But since the dashboard camera got destroyed, they couldn't know about the situation on the bus. Jin Song then ordered her team to find and interrogate Si King and He Yoon soon. She also ordered them to find a passenger at the bus stop who was caught by the security camera. That passenger was Shang Rong. Zhang Cheng and his team understood and began to look for information about Si King and He Yoon. They divided their team into smaller teams and assigned each team with different tasks. Zhang Cheng traced Si King and He Yoon's recent location. Si King and He Yoon were heading to a boarding house that was located in a densely populated area. Zhang Feng was heading to the boarding house to find Shang Rong. A woman there took him to the room where Shang Rong used to live. She thought that the police officers came to that place to see Shang Rong's landlord and take him to the court. Shang Rong's landlord got out of his room and greeted that woman. He was soon surprised and confused when he found out that the police officers wanted to see him. Zhang Feng asked him if Shang Rong used to live in his room. Shang Rong's landlord said that it was true. He told Zhang Feng that Shang Rong had left that room and stayed at his friend's house. Not far from that place, Si King and He Yoon were heading to the boarding house. Fortunately, Zhang Feng and his team didn't see them. Si King took He Yoon to a room so that he could clean himself there. He Yoon felt nauseous as he remembered how he murdered Ying Hong on the bus back then. He cleaned Ying Hong's blood from his body and then tried to calm himself down. It seemed that he was still shocked and traumatized by the murder that he had just committed. Si King tried to convince him that it was not his fault. She said that she would have done the same thing if she were He Yoon. She said that He Yoon had done the right thing by attacking Ying Hong because Ying Hong was a dangerous bomber. But He Yoon said that he preferred the bus to be exploded rather than murdering someone. Si King told him that the police officers were still after them so they needed to leave that place soon. 
Si Cave and Yun then left that place together. Suddenly, Jiang Feng received a call from his co-worker. His co-worker told him that he managed to trace Si Cave and Yun's recent location, and it was in that boarding house. Jiang Feng was surprised when he heard that. Shang Rong's landlord told Jiang Feng that Shang Rong was a good person. So he didn't believe that Shang Rong had committed a crime. He also said that Shang Rong helped the people to extinguish the fire another night. Jiang Feng asked Shang Rong about the fire. Shang Rong's landlord said that the fire happened in the room of the woman who lived there. Jiang Feng showed a picture of Ying Hong to Shang Rong's landlord and Shang Rong's landlord confirmed that the fire happened in Ying Hong's room. Jiang Feng asked him to take him to Ying Hong's room. Meanwhile, Zhang Cheng and his team were still looking for Si King and He Yun. Jiang Feng finally arrived at Ying Hong's room. He thought that there was something suspicious of that room. He warned people there not to come near that room. He peeked through the door hole to check the situation in that room. He believed that Ying Hong was the bus passenger who carried the bomb and that there was a bomb in that room. After that, Jiang Feng left that place and joined his team to find Si King and He Yun. He Yun and Si King got into an argument. He Yun asked Si King not to follow him anymore. After saying that, he left Si King and ran toward a truck. Not long after that, Zhang Cheng and his team arrived at the place where Si King and He Yun got into an argument. But by the time they arrived there, Si King and He Yun had left that place. Zhang Cheng saw He Yun's blood on the wall. He checked the tracking application in his phone and found out that Si King and He Yun were heading to some place. Zhang Cheng and his team then rushed to their location. In the truck, He Yun was mad at Si King because she still followed him even though he had asked her to stop following him. Si King said that she didn't know what to do. She said that she would follow He Yun whenever he went. He Yun told her that it would only make the police suspect them more and believe that they were murderers and bombers. He told Si King that they were fugitives now. He was afraid if it was the last cycle, but Si King believed that it was not the last cycle and that they would wake up on the bus again. Si King said that they needed to find a way to stop the cycle soon. He Yun then threw his phone away. He said that he would tell the police that he held Si King hostage if the police managed to capture them. But Si King didn't allow them to do that. She said that they needed to face this problem together. She suggested that they went to sleep so that the time would reset and they would enter the next cycle. But Yoon said that this whole never-ending time loop was not important anymore. He said that no matter how many cycles that he would enter, he would still be haunted by his guilt for murdering a person. Si King asked him why he returned to the bus and stopped Ying Hong from attacking her. In the car, Zhang Feng told Zhang Cheng about Shang Rong. Jiang Feng said that Shang Rong was known as a good person who helped his neighbors to extinguish the fire in a resident's room in that boarding house another night. He also found out that the fire in Ying Hong's room was caused by an explosion and he had sent a team to investigate Ying Hong's room. John Cheng checked the tracking application in his phone and found out that He Yun had stopped moving. In the truck, He Yun admitted that he returned to the bus because he didn't want Si King to get hurt anymore. He said that he didn't want to repeat the same mistake where he failed to save Si King before. But now that she had managed to save Si King, he was the one who became a monster instead. After Si King heard that, she threw her phone away. She said that she would stay with He Yun no matter what happened. Zhang Cheng and his team finally arrived at the location where He Yun was last spotted in the tracking application. But when they arrived there, they didn't find He Yun anywhere. They only found his phone there. As soon as the truck stopped at a place, Si King and He Yun got off the truck. The truck driver was surprised and mad when he found out that Si King and He Yun had been riding his truck behind his back. Si King and He Yun ran away immediately. While they were looking around that area, they remembered that it was near Lu Di's secret place. They then decided to go to Lu Di's secret place. At the police station, Jin Song and Yi Chan were watching a CCTV footage of the street where Si King's phone was found. They found out that there was a truck that passed on that street around the time when Si King's phone was thrown away. They suspected that Si King and He Yun rode that truck and wrote down the truck's license number. They found the truck driver's phone number and called him right away. Si King and He Yun finally arrived in Lu Di's secret place. They still remembered the code for the door lock and managed to open the door. He Yun went inside that place and cleaned his wound again. Si King was worried about He Yun. She tried to help him by looking for a first aid kit in that place, but she didn't find it. But suddenly she found some coins in that place. She told He Yun that she would go to a pharmacy. He Yoon didn't allow her to do that because there were security cameras everywhere, but Si King insisted on going to the pharmacy because she was afraid that He Yoon's wound would get worsened and infected. She looked around the room and saw Ludi's cosplay costumes there. Suddenly, she had an idea. She disguised herself in a cosplay costume and went to the pharmacy. While she was about to make a payment, she watched the news on TV. In that news, it was revealed that the police were after Si King and He Yoon and named the main suspects in the bus explosion case. 
Sti King then took out the coins that she found in Ludi's place and gave them to the cashier. The cashier was confused when she saw that. John Chang came to see the truck driver and asked him about the people who rode his truck secretly. Si King saw him there and tried her best to walk past him without drawing any attention. The truck driver told Zhang Cheng about where Si King and Yi Yun headed to after they left his truck. In Lu Di's place, Yi Yun used Lu Di's tablet to watch the news. Not long after that, Si King arrived in that place. She told Yi Yun that they needed to leave soon because the police were after them. Zhang Cheng and his team were searching that area to find Si King and Yi Yun. Yi Yun was worried after he watched the news. He didn't like the idea that the society thought of him as a criminal. He also said that he couldn't go anywhere because there was no safe place for him to hide from the police. But Si King said that the interrogation would be hard for them if the police managed to find and arrest them. Zhang Cheng approached a woman and asked her if she saw Si King and Yi Yun in that place. That woman told him about where Si King and Yi Yun headed to. Zhang Cheng and his team then went to different ways to capture Si King and Yi Yun. Zhang Cheng went to Lu Di's place but he didn't find anyone there. He then went to the rooftop, but he also didn't find Si King and Hi Yoon there. Turned out, Si King and Hi Yoon were at another rooftop. Hi Yoon checked the social medias and saw many comments from people about him and Si King. Those people even created conspiracy theories about the bus explosion incident. Hi Yoon read a comment that stated that he was a game designer who designed violent contents for games. In a video that was made by an influencer, an influencer assumed that the bus explosion was a part of a test run of the game that was developed by Hi Yoon. Si King asked Yi Yoon to stop paying attention to those kinds of contents, because it would only make him mad. She said that those people talked nonsense and thought that they knew everything about other people's lives. Those people only talked based on what they saw and criticized others based on their stupid moral compass. They didn't have critical minds and only attacked them to feed their ego. Si King still tried to calm Yi Yoon down. She said that at least they knew who was the person who was responsible for the bus explosion. Suddenly, Yi Yoon got up from his chair. He asked Si King to wait for him there. Si King was confused when she heard that. She asked Yi Yoon about where he was going, but Yi Yoon didn't answer her. The family members of the victims who died in the bus explosion came to the police station. They cried and looked very saddened by the deaths of their family members. Among them were Lu Di's parents. Lu Di's father refused to believe that his son died in the bus explosion. He got up from his chair, but the police officer stopped him from leaving that room. Suddenly, Zhang Cheng came to that place and asked them about what was going on. Ludi's father told him that his son didn't die in the bus explosion because he just found out that Ludi's tablet was connected to internet. He used a tracking application to trace Ludi's recent location and he found out that Ludi's location kept changing. He Yoon was heading to his friend's house and Si King was following him. John Chang and his team traced Ludi's tablet's location and headed to that location. He Yoon and Si King finally arrived at He Yoon's friend's house. He Yoon's friend was named Liu Peng. Liu Peng was mad at Hee Yoon because he knew that the police were after him. He said that the police had contacted him before and asked him about Hee Yoon. He tried to call the police again, but Hee Yoon stopped him right away. Hee Yoon asked him to calm down and discuss about this problem with him first. Liu Peng then mentioned about Hee Yoon's debt and asked him to imagine how difficult it was for Hee Yoon's parents to find out that their son was a criminal. Hee Yoon confessed that he had committed a murder but he swore that he was not the person responsible for the bus explosion. Hee Yoon said that he came to that place because he wanted to erase all designs that he had made for the game that they developed. Liu Peng was mad when he heard that. He called Hee Yoon selfish and rejected his request right away. Hee Yoon apologized to him and said that he shouldn't have added the violent contents to the game since the first place. He said that he would change the contents in the game like how Liu Peng wanted. Hee Yoon and Liu Peng then got into an argument. Liu Peng thought that Hee Yoon had been stubborn all this time. He criticized Yi Yoon for suddenly wanting them to do what he wanted. Yi Yoon said that he just didn't want the company to get involved in his problem. Liu Peng became a little calmer when he heard that. He asked Yi Yoon to solve his problem first and come to see him again after he solved his problem with the police. He also reminded Yi Yoon that he still thought of him as his brother. Before leaving, Yi Yoon told Liu Peng that he would turn himself into the police. Not long after that, Zhang Cheng and his team arrived in Liu Peng's house. But when they arrived there, Si King and Yi Yoon had already left that place. Zhang Cheng asked Liu Peng about Si King and Yi Yoon. Liu Peng said that Si King and Yi Yoon visited him in that place for a while. He also told Zhang Cheng about Yi Yoon's plan to turn himself into the police. Zhang Cheng then ordered his team to take Liu Peng with them. Before leaving, he saw Liu Di's tablet on the table. Si King and Yi Yoon went to the beach. They felt sleepy, but they tried their best not to fall asleep. He even waited Si King to fall asleep and planned to go to the police station and turn himself into the police when Si King was sleeping. He wanted to do that because he had no idea if the time would reset or if it was the last cycle. 
But Sea King didn't want to fall asleep. Instead, she came into the water so that she could stay awake. He grew saw her standing unsteadily and quickly saved her. Under the moonlight, Yoon and Sea King looked at each other and hugged each other. They began to develop feelings for each other. Not long after that, Sea King finally fell asleep. Yoon carried her and took her to some place. The next scene revealed a situation on the bus at a different time. It was dark and Sea King and Yoon were sleeping on the bus. Suddenly, another Yoon, who was wearing a prison uniform of hands being handcuffed and legs being chained, got on the bus. Yoon heard Sea King calling his name and walked toward her. But suddenly, Sea King woke up on the bus and found herself riding the same bus. She woke Yoon up. Yoon told her that he was tired with all of this and Sea King tried to calm him down. Yoon admitted that in the previous cycle, he turned himself into the police. But on his way to the police station, he fell asleep and suddenly woke up in the next cycle. Si King and Yoon then planned to get all bus passengers to get off the bus. They would communicate with those bus passengers through a written message because Ying Hong always suspected everyone on the bus. Yoon said that he would get the bus driver to get off the bus after all bus passengers got off the bus. Si King doubted that they could do this, but Yoon said that they didn't have much time to create another plan. Yoon and Si King then began to make a move. They approached the bus passengers and pretended to ask them to join a charity event that was held at the next bus stop. While they were talking to them, they showed their phone to them. On their phone screen, there was a message that stated that there was a bus passenger who carried a bomb. Shang Rong understood and nodded his head when he read that message. He Yun and Si King continued to approach other bus passengers and managed to convince them to get off the bus with their message. The social media influencer asked Yi Yun to talk to him in private after he read that message. Si King also approached Ying Hong and asked her to join the charity event that was held at the next bus stop. She pretended to be a college student and showed her the picture of the charity event. Ying Hong shook her head, uninterested in joining such event. The social media influencer suspected that Si King and He Yoon were secretly filming them and asked He Yoon about where they put the hidden camera. He thought that what He Yoon and Si King were doing was not right because they used a sensitive issue like terrorism for their prank. He Yoon didn't respond to him and walked towards Si King instead because the bus almost arrived at the bus stop. He Yoon asked Si King to stop Lu Dai from getting on the bus, meanwhile he would make sure that all bus passengers got off the bus through the back door. But unfortunately, before they had the chance to get off the bus, Yin Hong suddenly detonated the bomb. Si King and He Yoon then woke up and found themselves riding the same bus. They were tired and confused with everything that happened. They wondered why they couldn't get everybody to get off the bus and why Yin Hong wanted them to die together with her. Si King suggested that they pretended to be police officers. She thought that it would be easy for them to convince people if they told them that they were police officers. He Yoon said that they had a problem, and that problem was the social media influencer who always tried to argue with him. Si King suggested that they told some bus passengers about the bomb and asked them to stop Yin Hong together. He Yoon agreed with her idea. Si King and He Yoon then decided to approach Shang Rong first. But suddenly, Si King thought that it was a bad idea. She thought that they would harm people at the bus stop if they took the bomb there, so she suggested that they waited until the bus arrived at the bridge and threw the pressure cooker into the river. He even said that they needed some help to do that, and he suddenly remembered about Lu Dai. He then got up from his chair and showed his phone to Shang Rong. On his phone screen, there was a message that stated that he needed some help. Shang Rong agreed to help him. When the bus arrived at the bus stop, Lu Di got on the bus. He even called Lu Di by his nickname, Lu the Cat's Apostle and Asthma Conqueror. Ludi was surprised when he heard that. He didn't know how He Yoon knew his name. He Yoon then showed him the message in his phone. Ludi didn't remember that he knew He Yoon. But since He Yoon called him by his nickname and knew a lot of information about him, he agreed to help He Yoon. Si King got up from her chair and approached the bus driver. She told the bus driver that there was a bomb inside the red plastic bag that Yin Hong carried. The bus driver panicked when he heard that. Si King asked him to calm down and said that the police would take care of that problem. She asked him to stop the bridge and throw the bomb into the river. The bus driver asked her how the police knew that Ying Hong carried a bomb and Si King said that the police knew about everything. Si King said that the police ordered her to tell the bus driver about the bomb secretly. The bus finally arrived at the bridge. He Yu and Shang Rong attack Ying Hong immediately. Meanwhile, Lu Di grabbed the red plastic bag. Other bus passengers panicked when they saw that. Si King asked them to calm down. Yin Hong tried to attack He Yoon and Shang Rong back and Si King asked the bus driver to pull over. Yin Hong called the bus driver by his name and asked him why he called the police. She also called him a coward. The bus driver told her that he didn't call the police. Si King urged the bus driver to pull over and the bus driver finally did what she asked him. Si King tried to get off the bus but the bus driver refused to open the bus door. He Yoon asked other bus passengers to help him and broke the bus glass window. 
Suddenly, Si King heard the ringtone that she had heard before. Hee Yoon jumped out of the window and Si King gave the red plastic bag to him. But before Hee Yoon had the chance to throw the bomb into the river, the bomb suddenly exploded and killed everyone on the bus. Si King woke up and found herself riding the same bus. She was mad when she found out that the bus driver was also responsible for the bus explosion. Suddenly, she remembered the time when she once lost her wallet on the bus. She told the bus driver about it and asked him to help her. The bus driver then pulled over and asked anyone who had stolen Si King's wallet to return the wallet to Si King. But since nobody admitted that they had stolen Si King's wallet, the bus driver asked them to face the bus windows. He gave the chance to the person who had stolen Si King's wallet to return Si King's wallet. The pickpocket finally dropped Si King's wallet on the floor and the bus driver picked it up. Si King thanked the bus driver for helping her. Before returning to his seat, the bus driver told everyone on the bus not to steal again. Si King thanked the bus driver again for helping her. She noticed that the gloves that the bus driver were wearing was already old and broken. So the next day, Si King got on the same bus and tried to give a pair of new gloves to the bus driver to express her gratitude. But the bus driver refused to accept those gloves and asked Si King to take a seat instead. Si King was disappointed when she heard that, but she did what the bus driver asked her. The bus driver thanked her for being kind to him and asked her about where she studied. He was surprised when he found out that Si King attended the same university that his daughter attended. He said that his daughter had graduated and was working now. Back to the present time, Si King walked toward the bus driver and confronted him. She couldn't believe that the bus driver was responsible for the bus explosion. She asked the bus driver why he did this. The bus driver was confused and said that he didn't know what Si King was talking about. Si King asked him if there was someone who threatened him and put him under pressure. She believed that the bus driver was a good person and there was no way that he would harm other people. She thought that Ying Hong had threatened him. Ying Hong was confused when she saw Si King talking to the bus driver. She asked the bus driver who Si King was and what she was talking about. At the back of the bus, Hee Yoon woke up from his sleep and had a headache. Ying Hong was mad because the bus driver didn't answer her. Si King began to cry and said that she had been wanting to save the bus driver all this time. So she was really mad and disappointed when she found out that the bus driver was responsible for the bus explosion. Ying Hong laughed when she heard that. The bus driver told Si King that he didn't know her and asked her what her name was. Suddenly, Ying Hong detonated the bomb. The time then reset and the new cycle began. The bus finally arrived at the bus stop. While Xiang Rong and Ying Hong were about to get on the bus, the bus driver thought for a while before he decided to open the bus door. Ying Hong entered the bus with her red plastic bag. Apparently, she and the bus driver had been planning everything together. A journalist went to the bus head office and said that she wanted to interview the driver of the bus number 45. But the driver of the bus number 45, Singh, said that he didn't want to be interviewed because he was busy. His superior tried to persuade him, but Singh still refused to be interviewed. The journalist then decided to interview Singh's superior. Singh's superior said that it was true that Singh had returned a bag that contained around $60 million to the owner. He said that it was not the first time for Singh to return the precious items that he found on the bus. Singh always returned the items that the passengers accidentally left on the bus. King's superior was very proud of Xing for being a good and honest person. Back to the present time, the bus sped up after Ying Hong entered the bus. Si King woke up from her sleep and woke He Yoon up. She realized that He Yoon was getting more weak each time he woke up in a new cycle. He Yoon said that he didn't know what happened to him. He then asked Si King about their next plan. Si King apologized to him because she had behaved recklessly in the previous cycle. She said that she just couldn't believe that a kind and honest person like Xing would betray her and everyone on the bus. She admitted that she always chose to ride the bus number 45 because the bus driver was always nice to her. She said that she had been knowing the bus driver for two years. Si King wondered why Sing wanted to blow up the bus because Sing didn't look like a bad person. He even believed that Sing had planned everything since the beginning. He believed that Sing was the one who chose the place and the time when the bomb exploded. He asked Si King to get off the bus at the next bus stop to discuss about this problem together, and Si King agreed. When the bus stopped, the bus stopped, Si King and Yu got off the bus. They planned to find more information about the bus explosion. Si King believed that Yin Hong had threatened and forced X Sing to work together with her. She said that if Xing was a bad person who wanted everyone to die in the bus explosion, then he wouldn't have let her and Yu to get off the bus. She still believed that Xing was a good person and he wanted to save them. But Yi Yoon argued that if Sing truly wanted to save everyone on the bus, he wouldn't have allowed Ying Hong to get on the bus since the first place. He asked Si King to focus on finding the way to stop the bus explosion instead of finding excuse to justify what Sing did. But suddenly, the bus exploded. Yi Yoon found out that the bus exploded at 1.45. 
It was the time when the bus always exploded if Hee-yoon and Si-king didn't try to stop the bus explosion. After that, Hee-yoon and Si-king went to the bus head office and pretended to be college students. They said that they wanted to make a documentary film about the bus number 45 because a lot of college students use that bus to commute. They also said that the bus driver had been very nice to college students. They asked a worker there to give them some personal information about saying that that worker refused to do that because they didn't have official letter from university. Si King then promised that they would only ask general information about Xinged. That worker finally agreed to help them. But suddenly, a worker came to that place and looked panic. That worker told his co-workers that one of their buses exploded at the bridge. He and his co-workers then got out of the building and planned to head to the crime scene. The man who talked to Si King and Yu before was surprised when he found out that it was the bus number 45 that exploded at the bridge. He returned to his room but Si King and Yu had already left that place. He found a document about saying on the table and believed that Si King and Hee Yoon had looked into it. Si King and Hee Yoon took a picture of Sing's document and discussed about Sing's personal information that they found in that document. They found out that Sing was not from that town and he used to work as a truck driver before he became a bus driver. Hee Yoon wondered why Sing stopped working as a truck driver. He thought that it was impossible that Sing worked as a bus driver for four years only to plan a bus explosion. Si King found out that Sing decided to become a bus driver because his wife moved to another workplace. He Yoon and Si King assumed that Ying Hong, the bus passenger who carried the bomb, was Sing's wife. But they were not sure about it because Sing and Ying Ho lived separately. Si King and He Yoon then went to the boarding house where Sing lived. When they arrived in that place, they didn't find anyone there. He Yoon tried to call a locksmith and ask him for help, but a man suddenly came to that place. He Yoon and Si King thought that that man was Sing's roommate. Hyun told him that he was Sing's nephew and came to that place to take something from his uncle's room. But he said that he lost his uncle's key, so he called a locksmith and asked him for help. Hyun said that he didn't call his uncle because he knew that his uncle was busy. After Sing's roommate heard that, he finally allowed Hyun and Si King to enter that place. Hyun and Si King told him that they needed to take a document from Sing's room because there was a family problem. Sing's roommate said that they were allowed to search Sing's room, but he would be watching them. Because Sing's roommate watched them, Hee Yoon and Si King got awkward and didn't know where to find any clue. Si King then distracted that man's attention by saying that she was Hee Yoon's girlfriend. She said that Hee Yoon asked her to meet his family and Sing was the only family member that Hee Yoon had in town. She asked Sing's roommate's opinion about what kind of person Sing was. Sing's roommate told her that Sing was a good person, but he was very quiet. He said that Sing would help Hee Yoon and Si King if they asked him for any help. Si King then asked him about Sing's wife and Sing's roommate began to sound serious. Sing's roommate admitted that he heard a rumor that Sing and his wife would have a divorce. He said that he actually didn't like to interfere with anyone's business, but he suggested Si King to stay away from Sing's wife because she was mentally unstable. He said that Sing's wife always caused problems and that was why Sing decided to leave their house. Sing's roommate remembered that last month, Sing's wife asked Sing to return home because their house caught fire. He even found a phone in the drawer. He tried to turn on that phone, but he was unable to do it. Si King and Sing's roommates still had a conversation. But suddenly, Hee Yoon came to that room and asked Si King to go home. Before Si King left that place, Sing's roommate advised her not to interfere in Sing's family's business. After that, Si King and Sing went to a convenience store. In that place, they discussed about Sing's personal life. They were glad that they at least knew something about Sing. But they still wondered about Sing's motive to blow up the bus. Hyun said that the bomb always exploded at 1.45 right when the ringtone was heard. If the bomb exploded before 1.45, it was because Hyun and Si Kane tried to stop the bus explosion. Hyun didn't understand why the bomb needed to explode at 1.45. Si King thought that there was a third party who helped Sang and Yang Hong. But since it was impossible for them to find and investigate the third party, Si King suggested that they work together with the police. Hyun said that it would need a very long time for the police to find the perpetrators. He also said that he didn't want the police to arrest and interrogate them anymore. So they needed to make sure that the police found all clues so that they knew that the people responsible for the bus explosion were Xing and Ying Hong and not them. At the police station, Jiang Feng informed Zhang Cheng that everyone on the bus number 45 died in the bus explosion. Not long after that, Hyun and Si King arrived in that place. They had called Zhang Cheng before they went to the police station. They introduced themselves to Zhang Cheng and Zhang Cheng took them to the building. Zhang Cheng took Si King and He Yoon to meet Jin Song and other police officers. He Yoon and Si King said that they would help the police to investigate the bus explosion incident. Zhang Cheng asked He Yoon and Si King to tell the police about everything that they knew about the bus explosion. 
He even told them about why he got on the bus number 45 and why he got off the next bus stop. He said that he got off at the next bus stop because he was afraid of a mentally unstable woman on the bus. He said that he knew that that woman was mentally unstable because she took out her knife and said something weird about a bus explosion that would happen at 1.45. He even asked C. King not to tell the police in a very detailed manner before, but C. King wanted the police to find the perpetrator soon. John Cheng asked them about how the other bus passengers reacted when they saw that mentally unstable woman taking out her knife and heard her talking about the bus explosion. Sti King said that she didn't pay attention to how other bus passengers reacted because she was only focused on that mentally unstable woman. Zhang Cheng asked them about how the mentally unstable woman looked like and He Yun described her in a very detailed manner. Sti King also said that she got off the bus because the pressure cooker that that mentally unstable woman carried looked suspicious. She remembered that she smelled something weird from that pressure cooker. She asked the police to investigate Ying Hong's pressure cooker. Jin Song then ordered her subordinates to investigate the pressure cooker. Zhang Cheng asked Si King and He Yun if they knew anything about the relationship between the mentally unstable woman, Ying Hong, and the man who carried a suitcase, Shang Rong. Si King and He Yun thought that Ying Hong and Shang Rong didn't know each other because they sat far away from each other. Zhang Cheng asked them if they saw Ying Hong interacting with anyone on that bus, and Si King said that Ying Hong talked to the bus driver, Xing. Si King said that she heard Xing and Ying Hong talking about dying together. Suddenly, Yi Chen returned to the room and informed Jin Song that it was true that there was a pressure cooker on the bus. Before Si King and He Yun went to the police station, they had agreed to tell the police about everything in a very detailed manner. They did that so that the police could also reveal some important information to them. They agreed to stay longer at the police station so that they could gather a lot of important information about what happened. After that, Jiang Fang and his team left the police station. Zhang Chang realized that He Yun and Si King tried to lead the police to find something. He wondered about what Yum and Si King were planning. Jin Song said that she would investigate the crime scene. Zhang Chang returned to see King in Yum's room. He asked Yum to show him where each bus passenger sat on the bus. Yum did what he asked him and even told him about what each bus passenger was doing and carrying on the bus. Zhang Chang was amazed when he saw that. He thought that Yum had a sharp memory. Yum said that he was a game designer. But Zhang Cheng found it suspicious that a person could vividly remember about a situation that he visited only once. Zhang Cheng then asked Yi Yun to draw the map of the police station to see if he truly had a sharp memory or not. Yi Yun agreed to do that. He believed that he could describe the situation at the police station well because he had visited that place for several times. After he finished drawing the map of the police station, he gave his drawing to Zhang Cheng. Zhang Cheng now believed that Yi Yun had sharp memory. He then asked Yi Yun and Si King to identify the bus passengers from their pictures. But while Si King was looking at those pictures, she suddenly heard the ringtone that she heard on the bus before. She was surprised when she heard that ringtone. Zhang Cheng asked why Si King looked surprised. He even quickly said that Si King was surprised because she looked at the pictures and the victims. He said that those pictures made her guilty because she didn't do anything to save those victims even though she knew that something went wrong with the bus. Suddenly, Yi Chen came to that room. She informed Zhang Cheng that they had found the main suspect of the bus explosion incident. She said that their main suspect was a woman named Ying Hong. The police found out that Ying Hong was working at a chemical plant, and she was the bus driver's wife. After Zhang Cheng received that information, he left that room. Zhang Cheng and Jin Song were suspicious of how Si King reacted when she looked at the pictures of the victims. But they finally believed that she looked surprised because she felt guilty for not being able to save the victims of the bus explosion. They decided to believe in Si King and He Yun as the information that they gave them was pretty accurate. But they wanted to keep Si King and He Yun at the police station so that they could keep an eye on them. Jiang Feng and his team received new information about the bus driver. They found out that Xing used to work as a truck driver and Yun became an exemplary employee. They also found out that Xing specifically asked the bus company to allow him to become the driver of the bus number 45. The bus company finally accepted him as their worker and allowed him to become the driver of the bus number 45. They had offered him to become the driver of another bus, but Xing always turned down the offer. Xing even turned down the offer to get promoted as a manager. Meanwhile, Xing's wife, Ying Hong, was working at a chemical plant and a quality control department. But before she worked at the chemical plant, she used to work as a chemistry teacher in another city. The police also found out that Ying Hong was an exemplary employee who always worked overtime and became the last person who left the workplace. But the company said that they had been losing a lot of chemical substances since Ying Hong worked in that place. But they didn't mind about it because they believed that it was because those chemical substances were used for work. But Jiang Feng believed that Ying Hong had stolen those chemical substances to make her own homemade bomb. 
After Zhang Cheng heard that, he suspected that Xing and Ying Hong were planning to blow up the bus together. He wondered why they decided to detonate the bomb at 1.45. A police officer came to see King and He Yun's room and told them that they were allowed to take a break for a while. He gave two glasses of water to them and left them in that room. Si King told Yi Yun that maybe they were kept in that room because the police suspected her for how she reacted when she heard the ringtone. Yi Yun said that it was not her fault. He believed that they could find a way to stop the bus explosion in the next cycle. In another room, Zhang Cheng, Jin Song, and Yi Qian were watching a CCTV footage of Si King and Yi Yun visiting the bus head office. They also received information that Si King and Yi Yun visited Xing's boarding house. Zhang Cheng wondered about what Si King and Yi Yun were doing in those places. Zhang Cheng then came to Yi Yun and Si King's room and instructed them to give their electronic devices to him for investigation. Yi Yun and Si King then took out all their electronic devices and gave them to Zhang Cheng. One of those electronic devices was the phone that Yi Yun found in Xing's room. Zhang Cheng asked Yi Yun and Si King why they didn't call their family members. Yi Yun and Si King said that they wanted to stay at the police station and help the police to investigate this case. Si King asked Zhang Cheng about the clue that the police had just found, but Zhang Cheng didn't answer her. Instead, Zhang Cheng asked her why she asked him about it. Si King and Yi Yun said that they heard the police talking about Ying Hong, who worked at the chemical plant. They thought that it had something to do with the suspicious pressure cooker that Ying Hong carried on the bus. Suddenly, a police officer showed Jin Song the record of the phone calls from Si King and Yi Yun's phones. From that record, they found out that Si King and Yi Yun had never contacted Xing and Ying Hong. But Yi Qian said that there was something suspicious about Yi Yun's second phone. Zhang Cheng asked Si King and Yi Yun why they went to the bus head office and pretended to do college assignments. Si King and Yi Yun looked at each other in confusion when they heard that. Sting's roommate and a worker at the bus head office came to the police station. Jin Song asked them if Si King and Yi Yun came to their places and they said that it was true. The worker said that Si King and Yi Yun went to the bus head office because they wanted to do college assignments. He also remembered that Si King and Hi Yun asked him about the driver of the bus number 45. Xing's roommate said that Hi Yun told him that he was Xing's nephew and came to that place to find a document. Hi Yun told Zhang Cheng that Si King had panic attack after she got off the bus. He said that Si King was afraid if something bad happened to everyone on the bus. Si King felt guilty because she couldn't do anything to save everyone on the bus even though she knew something was wrong with the bus. Because of that, Hi Yun took Si King to the bus head office. They wanted to find more information about the bus driver. He Yun admitted that at first he didn't believe that there was a bomb on the bus. But after they gathered more information about the bus driver, he believed that there was something suspicious about the bus. That was why he decided to call the police. Zhang Cheng said that he understood why Si King felt guilty for not being able to save everyone on the bus. Since He Yun had told everything to the police, he asked Zhang Cheng to give him some information too. He said that he didn't want Si King to become more worried and guilty. Suddenly, Jin Song came to that room and asked Zhang Cheng to talk to her. After Zhang Cheng left that room, Yi Yun told Si King that he doubted that the police would believe them. The police officers went to Ying Hong's house and investigated that place. They found many chemical substances that were used to make homemade bombs in that place. They also found some receipts there. Zhang Feng said that he would investigate those receipts to find the people who had done business transactions with Ying Hong. Zhang Cheng suspected that those people were Yi Yun and Si King. But Jin Song said that Yi Yun and Si King's testimony matched Xing's roommate's testimony. Jin Song then ordered her team to investigate Yi Yun's second phone. She also urged them to solve this case as soon as possible. She said that everything would be under control as long as they kept Si King and Yi Yun at the police station. In the evening, Zhang Cheng returned to Si King and Yi Yun's room. Zhang Cheng told Yi Yun and Si King that Ying Hong was indeed a bomber. Yi Yun and Si King asked him about Xing and Ying Hong's motive to blow up the bus. Zhang Cheng said that the police still had no idea about that. He asked them to remember if there was any detail that they forgot to tell to the police. After Yun and Si King thought for a while, they finally remembered that the bomb exploded after it was detonated by someone. But they also assumed that the bomb could explode automatically. Yun admitted that he heard Ying Hong saying 145 repeatedly. After Jin Song heard that, she ordered her team to investigate an old bus incident that happened at the same bridge. She wondered if the bus explosion case had something to do with that case or number 145. He Yun told Zhang Cheng that his second phone was actually a phone that he found in Xing's room. He said that he didn't tell Zhang Cheng about it earlier because he was afraid that Zhang Cheng didn't believe him. He explained that he took that phone because it looked suspicious. He found it weird that Xing owned that phone because that phone looked very feminine. Si King assumed that that phone belonged to Xing's daughter. Zhang Cheng checked a document about Xing and found out that Xing had a daughter, 
but his daughter died five years ago. Si King was surprised when she heard that. She still remembered that Xing once told her that his daughter attended the same university where she studied. She suspected that this whole bus explosion incident had something to do with Xing's daughter. Zhang Cheng then left the room and talked to Jin Song. After Zhang Cheng left that room, Si King told Yi Yun that last year, while she was riding the bus, Xing told her that his daughter had graduated from university and was already working. Si King didn't understand why Xing lied to her about his daughter. She also remembered that Xing's roommate told her that Xing's wife, Ying Hong, was mentally unstable. Zhang Cheng received information that the phone that He Yun found in Xing's room belonged to Xing's daughter. The police had investigated that phone and found out that there was the last call in that phone was made five years ago at 134. But Xing didn't answer that call. After that, Zhang Cheng and his team were watching a CCTV footage at the bridge. In that CCTV footage, they saw the bus number 45 suddenly stopping in the middle of the road. Xing's daughter got off the bus and tried to cross the road. But suddenly, a truck crashed into her. The police noticed that the accident happened at 145. They also noticed that the accident happened at the same place and time when the bus explosion happened. Zhang Cheng was surprised when he found out about that. He couldn't believe that they managed to solve this case in only eight hours since they began to investigate the case. He thought that they managed to do this because of Si King and He Yun. He said that Si King and He Yun just wanted to know about Xing and Ying Hong's motive to blow up the bus. Zhang Cheng and his team then discussed about their next plan. He Yun and Si King discussed about their plan when they woke up on the bus in the next cycle. They tried to find a way to persuade Xing to stop the bus explosion. He Yun thought that they found out about how the police would react in such incident first. Suddenly, Zhang Cheng returned to that room. Si King asked him about what she should do if she was caught in the same dangerous situation again. He Yun pretended to be mad when he heard that. He said that if he knew that there was a bomb on the bus, he would get off the bus and save himself right away because he was not a hero who could save everyone. Si King also pretended to be mad when she heard Yun's answer. Zhang Cheng finally told them about what the police would do if they found out that there was a bomb on the bus. He said that someone needed to call the police and inform them about the bomb. That person also needed to stop the bus to arrive at the next stop. Before Zhang Cheng left the room, Si King got up from her chair and asked him how Xing's daughter died. Zhang Chen told her about the traffic accident that happened to Xing's daughter five years ago. Si King asked him again about what he would do if someone called him and informed him that there was a bomb on the bus. Zhang Cheng said that he and his team would go the location right away. He wasn't worried if it was only a prank call because the police could always trace the person who made that call and that person would receive punishment. He said that the police would do their best to save people's lives. He advised Si King to call the police if she found something suspicious another time. After saying that, Zhang Cheng tried to leave that room, but He Yun asked him to give him his phone number. Suddenly, He Yun and Si King entered a new cycle. He Yun woke up and found himself riding the same bus. Shang Rong and Ying Hong had already gotten on the bus by the time he woke up. Not long after that, Si King also woke up from her sleep. She panicked when she saw He Yun having a nosebleed, but He Yun said that he was all right. He Yun didn't understand why his health condition was worsening since the time had stopped going backward. But he believed that they could stop the never-ending time loop now since they had gathered a lot of information. He Yun then took a picture of Ying Hong and sent the picture to Zhang Cheng. He also called Zhang Cheng and asked him to read his message. Zhang Cheng didn't answer his call because he was still eating. But after he checked He Yun's message, he and his team headed to the location of the bus number 45 right away. On the bus, He Yun hugged Si King and told her that they would solve the mystery this time. After that, He Yun and Si King planned to slow down the bus. Si King pretended that He Yun was a pervert and asked Xing Sing to stop the bus. He Yun pretended to be mad at her. He Yun and other bus passengers then got into an argument. Sting got frustrated because of that. He finally decided to pull over. Si King tried her best to buy time for the police to arrive. While she was getting off the bus, she suddenly changed her mind and returned to the bus. She said that it was He Yun who was supposed to get off the bus because he was the one to blame. He Yun suddenly said that he lost his flash drive and pretended to look for it. Other bus passengers were mad because He Yun and Si King were wasting their time. Sing then closed the bus door and continued their journey. Si King and He Yun were confused about what they should do, but they still pretended to be mad at each other. Turned out, Zhang Feng and his team had arrived at the next bus stop. They were ready to enter the bus number 45. Not far from him, Zhang Cheng was watching the situation at the bus stop. He saw the bus number 45 approaching that place. But surprisingly, the bus didn't stop the bus stop and kept speeding up. The police officers and the bus passengers were confused because of that. Zhang Cheng and his team chased the bus right away. Zhang Cheng called Yi Yun and asked him to keep communicating with him. 
The bus passengers were getting more confused about the situation that was happening because the police were following their bus. Sig didn't care that the police were following them. He kept speeding up the bus and Yang Hong took out her knife. He even asked other bus passengers not to feel panic. The bus was heading to the bridge. Suddenly, Si King and He Yun attacked Yang Hong and tried to stop her from detonating the bomb. Other bus passengers were surprised when they saw that. Si King and He Yun were still struggling to stop Yang Hong from doing anything dangerous. Turned out, the police officers had blocked all roads and accesses to the bridge, but Sing didn't care about that and kept speeding up. Si King still tried to reason with Sing and mentioned about Sing's daughter. Sing was mad at her because she talked about his daughter. He said that his wife Ying Hong was right and he would reunite with his daughter soon. It was almost 1.45. The bus was approaching the bridge, speeding up and hitting the roadblocks. The bus crashed into the police car, but Sing still refused to stop the bus. The police officers and the bus passengers tried their best to stop the bus. In that chaotic situation, Yun broke the bus glass window and Si Kim gave the red plastic bag to Zhang Cheng. Zhang Cheng panicked as he heard the bomb timer ticking. While he was throwing the bomb into the river, the bomb suddenly exploded and injured him. Five years ago, Xing and his wife were riding the bus number 45. They saw a woman entering the bus. They thought that that woman was at the same age with their daughter. They approached that woman and asked her if she had been sexually harassed on the bus. That woman was uncomfortable by their question. She got up from her chair and reported them to the bus driver. The bus driver said that he would call the police and report them to the police. At the next bus stop, Xing and Ying Hong got off the bus. The police officers arrived and warned them not to cause any problem on the bus. Turned out, it was the third time for Ying Hong to tell a bus passenger to report to the police about sexual harassment. But Ying Hong refused to listen to the police and planned to get on the bus again. Xing tried to calm the police officers down and ask them to understand. He promised that he and his wife wouldn't cause any problem. The police officer told him that his daughter's case had been closed. So he hoped that Xing and Ying Hong didn't cause any problem and talk about that case anymore. After saying that, the police officer and co-worker left that place. After the police officers left, Sing returned to Ying Hong. Ying Hong was angry because the police couldn't find any evidence, but they also didn't allow them to investigate the case. Back to the present time, Zhang Feng and his team were shocked when the bomb exploded and injured Zhang Cheng. They called the ambulance immediately and took Zhang Cheng to the hospital. Si Kang and Yun also went to the hospital and received treatments for their wounds. While Yun was getting out of the room, Zhang Feng approached him and asked him how he knew that there was a bomb on the bus. Before Yun had the chance to answer him, the doctor interrupted and asked Zhang Feng not to interrogate Yun because Yun was still injured. Suddenly, Zhang Feng received a call from Jin Song. Jin Song informed him that Si Kang and Yun were the key witnesses in this case. Zhang Feng didn't know how to respond because he was still mad that the doctor didn't allow him to interrogate Yun. At the police station, the police officers were interrogating Xing and Ying Hong, but Xing and Ying Hong refused to say anything. Si King and Yu now had no idea about what they were going to do. Si King suggested that they move fast in the next cycle so that nobody would become a victim in the bomb explosion. But Yu was afraid that there wouldn't be the next cycle because they had saved everybody on the bus. Yun also thought that there was something wrong about all of this, but he didn't know what it was. Si King searched for information about the traffic accident that happened to Xing's daughter on internet and found a CCTV footage of that traffic accident. In that CCTV footage, Si King and He Yun saw a passenger asking the bus driver to stop the bus. After the bus driver stopped the bus, the passenger got off the bus. Unfortunately, while she was trying to cross the road, a truck suddenly crashed into her. Si King checked the comment section of that video and saw many people mocking that passenger and calling her stupid. She thought that Xing and Ying Hong would have been stat if they saw those comments. Suddenly, Si King realized that they were still far from solving this mystery. At the police station, Jin Song and her co-workers were watching the CCTV footage of the accident that happened to Meng Meng, Xing's daughter. Suddenly, a police officer named Officer Qin came to that room and gave all documents about Meng Meng's case to Jin Song. Officer Qin was the one who was taking charge of Meng Meng's case back then. From those documents, it was revealed that the bus company stated that Meng Meng forced the bus driver to stop the bus and open the bus door. After the bus door was opened, Meng Meng got off the bus, but suddenly, a truck came and crashed into her. The truck company and the bus company stated that they would take responsibility for the traffic accident that happened to Meng Meng. They also paid compensation to Meng Meng's family. Meng Meng's family didn't file any lawsuit against them. Not long after that, the driver of the bus number 45 on the traffic accident that happened to Meng Meng five years ago arrived at the police station. The police asked him to come to that place because they wanted to interrogate him about the traffic incident that happened five years ago. The bus driver asked them why they talked about that case again. 
He said that he had told everything that he knew about that case to the police. Jin Song said that the traffic accident case had something to do with the bomb explosion that happened at the bridge earlier. After the bus driver heard that, he told the police about what happened five years ago. He said that back then, a passenger approached him and asked him to stop the bus. Since that passenger Meng Ming kept forcing him to stop the bus, he finally stopped the bus and opened the bus door. He swore that he didn't know that his action could lead Meng Ming to her death. He said that the police could check the CCTV footage of that accident to see what really happened. He also added that there was nobody on the bus who wanted to help him to stop Meng Ming from getting off the bus. The bus driver said that he knew that he had violated the law by suddenly stopping the bus in the middle of the road. He said that he had lost his job because of it. He told the police that Meng Ming wanted to get off the bus because she missed the previous bus stop. He said that he couldn't hear what Meng Ming was saying to him because he focused on driving. He only heard Meng Ming asking him to stop the bus because she wanted to get off the bus. The bus driver got emotional when he was telling this story. He was angry because he thought that the police were blaming and punishing him for the traffic accident that happened five years ago. He even asked the police to just kill him if it was necessary. Jin Song and her team tried to calm him down and told him that they were not blaming or punishing him. A police officer took the bus driver to another room. After the police officer and the bus driver left that room, Jin Song and her team continued to discuss about the traffic accident that happened to Mei Ming five years ago. They looked into the documents of that case, but they didn't find any evidence that showed that Meng Meng was in any danger. So they found it strange that Meng Meng's parents stated that their daughter was in danger that she asked the bus driver to stop the bus in the middle of the road and got off the bus. Meng Meng's father, Singh, also stated that Meng Meng tried to call him before she got off that bus, but he didn't answer her call. After Meng Meng tried to call her father, she approached the bus driver and forced him to stop the bus. Since Meng Meng prevented him from driving carefully, the bus driver finally stopped the bus and opened the bus door. Jin Song noticed that before Meng Meng got off the bus, she looked at the back of the bus as if she looked at someone. Jin Song wondered who that person might be and what was Meng Meng's real reason to get off the bus. Officer Kin said that there had been many conflicts between the passengers of the bus number 45 because the bus stopped before the bridge and the bus stop after the bridge were located far away from each other. Because the police didn't find any evidence, they claimed that Meng Meng got off the bus because she missed the previous bus stop. Officer Chin also said that the bus company, the truck company, and Meng Meng's family had agreed about who would take responsibility for the traffic accident. They had also signed the document about the compensation that would be paid by the bus company and the truck company. At first, Meng Meng's parents refused to accept that decision. They decided to investigate the case by themselves for around a month, they would get on the bus number 45 every single day and asked other bus passengers if they had been sexually harassed while riding that bus. Officer Kin said that it was only Xing who signed the document about their agreement. Ying Hong knew about that agreement, but she didn't do anything about it. But while the police were investigating Meng Ming's case, Ying Hong began to become mentally unstable. Because of that, the police decided to only communicate with Xing. Xing and Ying Hong never questioned the police's decision. It was also revealed that Ying Hong used to work as a chemistry teacher. But since she lost her daughter, she became more mentally unstable and even physically harassed her student once. Because of that, she lost her job and decided to work at the chemical plant. Singh also became more and more unhappy with his job. He never mentioned about his daughter to his co-worker anymore. Not long after that, Ying Hong and Singh decided to move to another city. At the hospital, the doctor informed Jiang Feng and his wife that they couldn't save Zhang Cheng. Zhang Feng and Zhang Cheng's wife were shocked when they heard that. They were devastated by Zhang Cheng's death. After that, Zhang Feng went to Yun's room. He asked Si King and He Yun how they knew that there was a bomb on the bus and how they knew about Zhang Cheng's phone number. Si King said that she knew Zhang Cheng personally. Zhang Feng told her that Zhang Cheng had passed away. He asked Si King and He Yun to explain everything to him. But suddenly, some police officers came to that room and took Zhang Feng with them. At the police station, the police officers were still interrogating Xing, but Xing still refused to open his mouth. In another interrogation room, Ying Hong said that it was because of two police officers on the bus that she couldn't reunite with her daughter. Yi Chen was confused when she heard that. She asked her why she thought that Si King and Yi Yun were police officers, but Ying Hong didn't answer her. Instead, Ying Hong asked why the police didn't investigate the death of her daughter seriously. She found it suspicious that the police stopped investigating the case and closed the case as a simple traffic accident. Yi Shin promised that the police would reopen the case if Yi Shin would cooperate with the police. Ying Hong told her that she was the one who planned the bus explosion. She was also the one who made the homemade bomb and took it to the bus number 45 and her husband, Sim, had nothing to do with the bombing. She confessed that she forced her husband to do this with her because she wanted to die together with him. 
Jin Song went to Xing's interrogation room and promised Xing that the police would restart the investigation of Meng Ming's case. Jin Song understood that Xing felt sad and guilty because he couldn't protect his daughter, especially to consider that Meng Ming died after she tried to call him. Xing admitted that he felt responsible for the death of his daughter because he didn't answer her call. He thought that Meng Ming could have survived if he answered her call back then. Xing was also angry when he read the mean comments about the traffic accident that happened to his daughter on internet. He didn't understand why those people could say cruel and mean things about the person they didn't even know of. He said that he wouldn't have committed the bombing if they found any important clue and had hope back then. Xing said that he was the one who forced his wife to plan the bombing. He confessed that he forced his wife to make the bomb. Jin Song told him that everybody on the bus were just like him, they also had children and parents. She said that even though Xing was angry, it was not wise of him to take out his anger on innocent people. She believed that his late daughter Meng Meng wouldn't have wanted him to commit this crime too. Xing knew that she was right and apologized to her. Five years ago, while Xing was still working as a truck driver, he and his co-worker were taking a break. Before Xing got off the truck, he removed his gloves. Those gloves were a gift by his daughter, Meng Meng. Not long after Xing got off the truck, Meng Meng called him. But Xing didn't answer her call because he left his phone in the truck. Not long after that, Ying Hong went to the bus head office. Xing was surprised to see his wife there. He was getting more surprised when he heard that his daughter Meng Meng had passed away. A police officer then gave him a document about the compensation that would be paid by the bus company and the truck company and asked him to sign the document. But Ying Hong refused to sign that document and said that she didn't need any compensation. She asked the police if they had found out about why Meng Meng suddenly got off the bus. She said that she would sign the document after she found out about what happened to her daughter. Suddenly, Xing collapsed. In the bathroom, Ying Hong heard a police officer talking to his co-worker. That police officer called Ying Hong stupid and said that nobody wanted to meet a stubborn person like her. He also said that he heard a rumor about a woman who was being sexually harassed by a man on the bus number 45. Ying Hong was surprised when she heard all of those. She was curious and wanted to know more about what was going on, but she didn't find the person who said it. After that, Ying Hong and Sing began to investigate this case by themselves. They often rode the bus number 45 and asked the female passengers there if they had been sexually harassed on that bus. Since the female passengers got uncomfortable by them, the bus driver refused to allow them to ride the bus anymore. Ying Hong got frustrated because of that. She didn't know what she needed to do anymore. Xing tried to persuade his wife to just sign the document and trust the police to investigate their daughter's case. He said that he didn't believe that if there was a sexual harassment on the bus number 45 like the rumor that Ying Hong heard at the bus head office's bathroom back then. But Ying Hong refused to listen to him. She was angry and disappointed at everyone. Xing tried to persuade her to let go of everything that happened and continue to live their life. He said that they were still needed by many people, especially Ying Hong's students. Xing then agreed to sign the document about the compensation that would be paid by the bus company and the truck company, but Ying Hong still refused to do it. The next day, Ying Hong returned to her workplace. While she was teaching in class, she heard a group of students making a noise. Ying Hong approached one of those students and took his phone. In his phone, she saw a CCTV footage of her daughter getting off the bus. She checked the comments in that video and saw many people saying mean and cruel things about her daughter. Many people called Meng Ming stupid and blamed her for getting off the bus, including that student. Ying Hong complained that there was no single good comment about her daughter, but that student said that the good comments were buried by the bad comments. At home, Xing tried to talk to Ying Hong, but Ying Hong didn't respond to him. He was confused with that, but he thought that his wife just needed some space. Suddenly, Meng Ming's ringtone was heard. Xing asked Ying Hong to turn off Meng Ming's phone, but Ying Hong refused to do it. Ying Hong said that she wanted to talk to him. She asked Xing why their daughter called him twice, but he didn't answer her that day. She found it suspicious that Meng Ming called them on working hours because she had never done it before. Meng Ming knew that Ying Hong didn't bring her phone while she was teaching in class and Xing they needed to focus while he was driving. So she never called them while they were working. But that day, right before Meng Ming died because of traffic accident, she called Xing twice and Xing didn't answer her. Ying Hong believed that Meng Ming was in trouble and she called Xing to ask for help. She was angry because Xing could have saved their daughter if he answered her call back then. Ying Hong went berserk meanwhile Xing could only cry, blaming himself for the death of his daughter and calling himself a murderer. Xing then asked Ying Hong to move to another city. After that, Xing went to the bus head office and applied for a job as a bus driver. In the job interview, the interviewer asked him about his old job as a truck driver. He asked Xing why he wanted to become a bus driver despite he earned more money when he worked as a truck driver. 
Sheng said that he had to leave his old job because he had to accompany his wife who moved to a new city. The interviewer finally accepted him as a driver there, but Sing told him that he only wanted to drive the bus number 45. Ying Hong and Sing finally moved to a new city and rented a garage. Sting was angry because the bus company had forgotten about his daughter's case. Time finally passed. When Sing heard that Ying Hong's room caught fire because of the bomb explosion, he visited Ying Hong to see if she was alright. Ying Hong and Sing finally decided to execute their plan. Ying Hong said that she had finally managed to make a homemade bomb after years of attempts. She told Sing to let her take care of the bombing and ask him to continue living his life. She also suggested them to have a divorce and asked Sing to start a new life without her. But Sing insisted on executing their plan together. He said that they should reunite with their daughter together. After that, Sing returned to his boarding house. Back to the present time, Yi Qian showed some pictures of Ying Hong's room to Jin Song. It seemed that Yi Qian used her room as a place to make homemade bomb. The police had investigated Sing and Ying Hong and found out that they didn't know Si Qing and He Yun. At the hospital, Si Qing and He Yun believed that there would be one more cycle. They believed that there was something about the case that they hadn't solved. Si Qing said that they still had time to find out about the truth. She suddenly remembered that Meng Ming attended the university where she studied. So she called her lecturer and asked her to come to the hospital. Not long after that, Si Qing's lecturer came to the hospital. She was worried about Si Qing, but Si Qing said that she was all right. Si Qing introduced Yi Yun to her lecturer as her boyfriend. She also told her about what happened to her earlier. Si Qing's lecturer wondered why it was always the bus number 45. Si Qing and Yi Yun asked her what she meant by that. Si Qing's lecturer then told them about the accident that happened to Meng Ming five years ago. She said that five years ago, she had just begun her career as a lecturer. One afternoon, she received news that her student had an accident. He Yun and Si Qing were surprised when they heard that. They wanted to make sure if that student was Meng Ming. Zhang Feng told his co-worker that he wanted to talk to Yi Yun and Si Qing. His co-worker was worried when he heard that. Zhang Feng promised that he wouldn't use violence this time. After Yi Yun and Si Qing heard Si Qing's lecturer's description of her student, they believed that that student was Meng Ming. They then told her about what they found suspicious about Xing and Ying Hong while they were riding the bus. Outside of that room, Zhang Feng was listening to their conversation secretly. Si Qing said that if the police didn't arrive on time, everybody on the bus would have died by now. She then asked her lecturer about what she knew about the traffic accident that happened to Meng Ming five years ago. She also asked her if she knew why Xing and Ying Hong wanted to kill everybody on the bus. Si Qing's lecturer said that Meng Ming's parents didn't ask anything from the university. She also said that the police closed the case as simple a traffic accident because Meng Ming's parents had signed the document about the compensation that would be paid by the bus company and the truck company. Si Qing wanted to know if there was somebody else on the bus, but the lecturer refused to answer her because she was not a police officer. Suddenly, Zhang Feng came to that room. He asked the lecturer to tell him about what she knew about the accident. The lecturer finally told him that the academic community used to talk about the accident that happened to Meng Ming in the university forum. But suddenly, one day, the university banned the room chat and forbade everyone from talking about the accident. The lecturer said that Meng Ming was a shy and kind-hearted person, and she only had a few friends at campus. She also said that Meng Ming was a smart student. So she believed that there must be something that made her suddenly stop the bus and get off the bus in the middle of the road. Zhang Feng asked her to show him the university forum. The lecturer said that she didn't have the access to the university forum, but she said that she would help Zhang Feng to talk to the admin. Si Qing wanted to go with them and ask Zhang Feng to trust her, just like how Zhang Cheng trusted her. Zhang Feng finally allowed her to go with them. Zhang Feng, Si Qing, and the lecturer then left the hospital together and came to see the admin of the university forum. The admin helped them to access the university forum. In that university forum, they saw many mean and cruel comments about the accident that happened to Meng Ming. Many people called Meng Ming stupid and blamed Meng Ming for her own death. Si Qing was surprised when she read those comments. She didn't understand why those people could say something mean about someone's death. Zhang Feng thought that those people could say such mean and cruel things because they felt safe behind anonymity. Nobody knew about their true identities and they wouldn't get any consequences from saying those horrible things. But suddenly, Si Qing spotted one comment that spoke up for Meng Ming. That person said that Meng Ming was not crazy because they met her on the bus. That person made that comment three days after the traffic accident took place. There was a reply to that comment. In that reply, the writer asked that person not to lie. They argued that if that person truly knew about the situation on the bus, they would have reported it to the police instead of posting a comment in the university forum. The writer also accused that person of being a murderer for not helping Meng Ming even though they admitted that they knew about what happened on the bus. 
After C. King read those comments, she suggested that they trace the IP address of the person who stated that they knew about what happened on the bus. After they traced the IP address, they found out that that person lived in a boarding house. The lecturer then looked for the document about the college students who lived in that boarding house. It was revealed that it was an all-girls boarding house and there was a college student who used the internet around the time when the comment was made. In another place, a woman showed her friend an article about the explosion that happened on the bus number 45. Her friend read that article but she didn't give any response. After that, that woman left that place. After that, that woman's friend read another article about that bus explosion. Not long after that, C. King, Jiang Feng, and the lecturer came to that place. Apparently, that woman was the college student who wrote a comment in the university forum. That woman was named Liu Yao. Liu Yao was surprised when she saw her lecturer there. Her lecturer asked her about the comment that she made about the accident that happened to Meng Ming five years ago. C. King asked her why she spoke up for Meng Ming and wrote a comment that there was a pervert on the bus. At first, Liu Yao denied that she wrote that comment, but C. King forced her to tell them about the truth. But after Jiang Feng introduced himself as a police officer, Liu Yao began to feel panic. Jiang Feng asked her if the traffic accident that happened to Meng Ming five years ago had something to do with the bombing incident that happened recently. Si Qin revealed that she was one of the bus passengers and the people responsible for the bombing were Meng Ming's parents. She said that Meng Ming's parents did that because they wanted to take revenge on society for the death of their daughter. Si Qin asked Liu Yao to tell them about what she knew about the traffic accident that happened to Meng Ming five years ago. Jiang Feng promised that nothing would happen to Liu Yao if she told them about the truth. But Liu Yao doubted that because nobody could guarantee that she would be safe. She knew that people would come after her and harass her if she did a little mistake. She knew that she would be the one who was blamed if people found out about what really happened to Meng Ming on the bus. She said that the police wouldn't be able to help and protect her. But Jiang Feng promised that they would keep the information about Meng Ming's secret. He said that they didn't come to that place to blame her. Si King knew that Liu Yao's intention was good. She believed that Liu Yao was only trying to help Meng Ming. And that was why she wrote that comment. She knew that Liu Yao had been suffering for years because she kept that information for herself. Jiang Feng asked that woman why she wrote that comment and if she was riding the same bus when the accident happened. Jiang Feng, Si King, and the lecturer finally managed to convince Liu Yao to trust them. Liu Yao told them that Meng Ming was being sexually harassed by a pervert on the bus. She said that she wanted to report it to the bus driver, but she was afraid if that pervert would hurt her. But she admitted that she took pictures for proof. Five years ago, there were many visitors on the bus number 45. A man couldn't stop staring at Liu Yao. Uncomfortable by that, Liu Yao walked away from him and took a seat on an empty chair. That man then targeted Meng Ming who was standing near him. He approached her and began to sexually harass her. Liu Yao was surprised when she saw that. She took pictures of that man when he sexually harassed Meng Ming. Meng Ming was scared and uncomfortable when that pervert was sexually harassing her, but she was too traumatized to do anything. That pervert suddenly looked at Liu Yao who was taking pictures of him. Liu Yao panicked and pretended that she was using her phone as a mirror. That pervert then walked toward Liu Yao. When the bus stopped at the next bus stop, Liu Yao got off the bus and called her mother. She told her mother that there was a pervert on the bus. Her mother panicked when she heard that. But after she found out that Liu Yao was alright and it was not her who was sexually harassed, she finally felt relieved. She was glad that it was not her daughter who was being sexually harassed. Liu Yao said that she took pictures of that pervert when he was sexually harassing another passenger on the bus. She planned to report it to the police. But her mother was worried if that pervert knew that Liu Yao was the one who reported him to the police. She was afraid if that pervert took revenge on her. She was worried about Liu Yao's safety because Liu Yao was living alone in that city. If something bad happened to her, she couldn't help Liu Yao because she was so far away from her. Liu Yao's mother said that if Liu Yao reported that pervert to the police, the police might put that pervert in the prison for only a few days. And after that pervert was released from the prison, he would certainly hunt and hurt Liu Yao. Liu Yao realized that her mother was right. She finally canceled her plan to report the sexual harassment that happened to Meng Ming on the bus to the police because she was worried about her own safety. Liu Yao's mother asked Liu Yao to just forget about the sexual harassment incident that she had witnessed. She also advised Liu Yao not to wear provocative clothes when she went out. Liu Yao was mad when she heard that. She told her mother that there was no correlation between clothes and sexual harassment. She said that they should focus on blaming the perpetrator and not the victim. She said that unlike animal who only had animal instinct, human had conscience that could guide them to the rightness and wrongness of their behavior. So the perpetrator should know how to control himself. After saying that, Liu Yao hanged up the call. A few days later, Liu Yao read an article about the traffic accident that happened to Meng Ming. 
There is a CCTV footage of Meng Meng forcing a bus driver to stop the bus and open the bus door. Liu Yao saw many mean and cruel comments about that accident on internet. She was shocked when she saw those comments. Those people called her stupid and crazy. She didn't understand why those people blamed Meng Meng for getting off the bus. Since Liu Yao knew about what actually happened on the bus, she wrote a comment in the university forum. She spoke up for Meng Meng and said that there was a pervert on the bus. But people replied to her and said that she was lying. Those people asked her to give them evidence to prove that what she was saying was true. Liu Yao then took her phone and tried to send the pictures of the pervert who sexually harassed Meng Meng that she took another day. But before she had the chance to send those pictures, a person added another comment. In that comment, that person said that Liu Yao would be seen as a murderer because she didn't stop Meng Meng from getting off the bus. That person also said that Liu Yao's parents would be angry at her because of that. Another comment said that if a person witnessed sexual harassment but they didn't do anything about it, then that person deserved to die. Another person said that the police should arrest Liu Yao for witnessing a sexual harassment but not reporting it to the police. Liu Yao got frustrated when she saw those comments. She couldn't believe that those people blamed her for the death of Meng Ming and even called her a murderer. So she canceled her plan to send the pictures of the pervert to the forum. Back to the present time, Liu Yao said that she couldn't access the university forum anymore because it had been blocked by the admin. She knew that she was selfish and weak back then, but she was afraid of what those people said. She then showed Jiang Feng the pictures of the pervert that she took back then. Despite the threats that she had received, she had never deleted those pictures. She had been keeping those pictures in her phone and online storage all this time. Sti King asked her if she could have access to those pictures. At the hospital, He Yun's health condition was worsening. Suddenly, she received a message from Si King. He Yun checked that message and saw the picture of the pervert that was taken by Liu Yao five years ago. When Jiang Feng and Si King returned to the hospital, they saw Yi Xian waiting for them there. Yi Xian told them that Jin Song was waiting for them at the police station. Yi Xian then asked Jiang Feng to talk to her in private. She asked him why he investigated this case by himself. But Jiang Feng said that he didn't have much time. He just wanted to know how Zhang Cheng died and wanted to solve this case as soon as possible. He said that it was the least thing that he could do to Zhang Cheng. Si King went to He Yun's room and told everything that she knew from Liu Yao to He Yun. She was sad for Meng Meng and said that she didn't know about what to do if she was in Meng Meng's situation. She was afraid if someone sexually harassed her and there was nobody who helped her. She was worried if there were a lot of women who experienced what Meng Meng experienced out there, and those women didn't speak up about what happened to them because they were afraid that society would blame them. After that, Si King and He Yun discussed about what they were going to do when they woke up in the next cycle. He Yun hoped that the next cycle would be her last cycle. He said that if they couldn't be together in the next cycle anymore, he hoped that Si King could solve the mystery by herself. He also asked Si King to quit the never-ending time loop. Si King was confused when she heard that. She didn't understand why Yi Yun said that to her. Yi Yun said that he was just afraid that he would lose her. He promised that he would never forget about Si King if the cycle had stopped. He said that when that happened, he would find Si King, got to know each other, and asked her to be his girlfriend. Si King agreed and shook his hands. Si King and Yi Yun then kissed in that room. After that, Jiang Feng took Si King and Yi Yun to the police station. On their way there, Si King and Yi Yun fell asleep. Suddenly, Si King woke up and found herself riding the same bus. Si King was worried when she found out that He Yoon's health condition was worsening. She remembered that He Yoon had nosed Li before. Because of that, she decided not to wake He Yoon up from his sleep and executed her plan alone. She took a picture of Ying Hong and sent the picture to Zhang Cheng. She told Zhang Cheng that there would be a bombing incident at the bridge. She also called Zhang Cheng to make sure that Zhang Cheng read the message. Zhang Cheng and his team headed to the bridge as soon as they received that message. Si King approached Xian Rong and asked him for help. Ying Hong began to feel worried. Shang Rong read Si King's message and agreed to help her. The police had blocked all roads and accesses to the bridge. They also turned off the police car's sirens so that Sing and Ying Hong didn't realize that they were chasing them. When the bus stopped at the next bus stop, Lu Di got on the bus. Zhang Cheng called Si King and asked her to keep communicating with him. Si King then approached Lu Di and asked him to help her. To convince Lu Di to help her, Si King called Lu Di by his nickname, Lu Li Cat's Apostle and Asthma Conqueror. Lu Di was surprised when he heard that. He finally agreed to help Si King. Zhang Cheng decided to divide the team. Zhang Cheng sent four police cars to follow the bus and sent other police cars to block the bus at the bridge. Suddenly, Si King asked Ex Sing to stop the bus. Zhang Rong then got up from his chair and stopped Ying Hong. Meanwhile, Lu Di grabbed the red plastic bag. Other bus passengers panicked when they saw them. They tried to help Zhang Rong to stop Ying Hong, but Ying Hong managed to approach Lu Dai. 
But suddenly, He Yu woke up from his sleep and stopped Ying Hong from detonating the bomb. On the phone, Zhang Chang heard the chaotic situation on the bus. Other police officers were trying to stop the bus. He Yun and Si King tried to talk to Xing, but Xing refused to listen to them. Xing kept speeding up the bus and crashed into the police cars that were blocking the road. Xing tried to move backwards, but Zhang Feng and other police officers stopped him right away. Xing tried to run away from that place, but the police officers had already surrounded them. Xing thought that there was no way for him to run away. So he got up from his chair and tried to detonate the bomb, but other bus passengers stopped him from doing that. Suddenly, Si King told Xing that she knew his daughter. Zhang Feng and his team finally managed to open the bus door and enter the bus. Xing grabbed the red plastic bag that contained the bomb. Zhang Cheng tried to calm him down and ask him to be reasonable. Si King then showed Xing the picture of the pervert who sexually harassed Meng Ming. Si King said that she knew about the real reason why Meng Ming got off the bus that day. She knew that Meng Ming was being sexually harassed by a pervert on the bus. She understood that Meng Ming felt powerless and scared as she couldn't find a way to run away from the perpetrator. Si King told Xing that she knew the person who witnessed the sexual harassment that happened to Meng Ming. So she asked Xing to forget about the bombing and release everyone on the bus. She said that she could clear Meng Ming's name who had been ridiculed by many people on the internet and reveal the truth to people. Zhang Cheng promised Xing that he would start reinvestigating Meng Ming's case. He said that it was pointless to do the bombing because many innocent people would die and the perpetrator who had harassed Meng Ming would be free out there. Zhang Cheng said that Xing needed to stay alive so that he could make sure that the perpetrator who had harassed Meng Ming would receive his punishment. After Zhang Cheng heard that, he finally decided to give in. He gave the bomb to Zhang Cheng, and Zhang Cheng quickly threw the bomb into the river. Fortunately, nobody died or got injured because of that bomb explosion. Zhang Cheng, Zhang Feng, and all bus passengers managed to survive. The police officers then arrested Xing and Yin Hong. Before going inside the police car, Yin Hong had a hallucination where she saw her daughter smiling at her. On the bus, Si Kang and Yi Yun hugged each other. They were happy that they could finally stop the bombing and save everyone. They hoped that it would be the last cycle for them. Other bus passengers were also relieved and happy. At the police station, Zhang Cheng approached Hee Yoon and Si King. Zhang Cheng asked them how they knew about the bomb on the bus and his phone number, and how they gave detailed explanation about the situation on the bus. Hee Yoon and Si King said that they were happy to cooperate with the police. They said that it would be impossible for them to explain everything in just one sentence. Zhang Cheng asked them to take their time and thank them for being brave. After that, he allowed them to go home and return to the building. He Yun and Si King were very happy with everything that happened that day. Not only that they stopped the bombing incident and saved everyone, the police also didn't suspect them. When they arrive in their house, they still communicate with each other by exchanging messages. After that, He Yun went to sleep. This time, he didn't wake up on the bus. This time, he woke up and found himself in his old bedroom. He was very happy because he finally escaped the cycle. Si King was also happy because she could finally go back to college. Later, Si King, He Yun, and other bus passengers went to the police station. The police officers rewarded the bus passengers with some awards because they had worked together to stop the bombing incident. The police officers gave an applause and some money. In another place, a man woke up and came to his workplace. Suddenly, some police officers came to that place and arrested that man. That man was the pervert who sexually harassed Meng Ming. Xing was sent to the prison for attempting the bombing incident. While he was walking to his cell, he saw the pervert who sexually harassed his daughter. Other bus passengers continued to live their life. Go Cheng, the bus passenger who carried a woven bag that contained some watermelons, came to his son's workplace. Guo Qing's son, Xiao Long, was happy to see his father again. He greeted his father and invited his friends to enjoy the watermelons that his father carried. In another place, Lu Bei threw a birthday party. He was happy to see his parents attending his birthday party and wearing cosplay costumes. His parents also gave him the present that he had been wanting all this time, which was a hairless cat. Shang Rong had a new job as a food delivery courier, and the social media influencer was getting more popular on the internet and having some new fans. Meanwhile, Si King and He Yun were visiting Meng Ming's grave. After they prayed for her, they left the cemetery and continued to live their life.